Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Do a massive warm welcome to all of the people who join us in Discord and G+, so you can enjoy their conversation while I set up for today's live show. Hello, Sleeping Warrior. Hello, Sleeping Warrior. <laughs> okay. Can't hear you, my friend. Well, isn't that wonderful? Hang on. Well, as you're telling me to hang on, shout out my patrons while you're faffing around. Shout out of appreciation to Guns of Navarone, RMP, Troy Shuka, Bose Nail, Justin Duso, Joseph Pizarro, Sampson, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, NA Literalist, Marine Indians, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Rob H, Nathan Thompson, The Real Gabster, Windrider, Liam Nedrick, Erwin Jennison's Abraham Mohammed, Dave Rakia Gafford, Nyby, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Fireball X, Texas Mike, Edwin Johnson, Kirsten Smith, Alexander Main, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. Thank you for talking over my shout outs. How are you doing, Sleeping Warrior? I'm just setting me some microphone level. You can hear me now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. You're not the last one to know, are you? Bob's the last one to know. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> have you seen the video your video no i, I saw oh, a couple on. of your videos about some of the latest propaganda not propaganda there's a death certificate stop being a conspirator <laughs> me, me being a conspirator i love it <laughs> i'm flipping it around against everybody now they're becoming the uh because that blurfers that's a brilliant word to describe them. It's just a pure, brilliant um, derogatory because they call us flurfers. So blurfers is just brill. But now those that are denying that she's got a better death certificate in that database, then they become the conspirator because why does that de why does them details exist if she's not actually dead? They shouldn't uh. be in there, but they are in there. Okay, I didn't get the certificate, but they're in there. So it's like, what's going on there? It's a nice little rabbit hole for you to concern yourself with. Me, I don't care. It's just nonsense. But that wasn't the video I was on about, though. I'm on about my, my gravity video for Bob. Did you see that? No. Fill me in. Mate, it's glorious. T tell me about chocolate it. Tell put me. In the, chocolate put in the Ball Busters chat um, five screenshots from uh, Wits It Gets It's live chat last night. Um, I'm not sure what was going on in there, but Chocolate copied them and posted them in there, so I thought I'm having them because um, he's asking a legitimate question. Now, obviously, we can easily perceive him to be a troll, but I realise that he's in a curve. He's following the the, cat, the path now. He's realising that maybe there is something to it, so he's critically analysing it, and he's asked the question, why is it that when I jump off a ladder, why is it that I fall down and not up? And the answer, of course, is because you're far more dense than the medium and you're not a helium balloon if you were a helium balloon and you jumped off the ladder you would rise up but you're not a helium balloon bob you're much more dense but the fact that he asks that question means that that, that means he's thinking right now regardless that he's not got it right and he can't get it he's, he's got it cross wide in his brain it's still a legitimate a legitimate question to ask so rather than treat him as a troll, I thought, right, he's asking a question that I've seen many people ask before because Fight the Flat Earth thought that as well. But that's because he's a mong. But because he asked the question, that means he's thinking. So I thought, I'm not going to treat him as a troll. I'm going to treat him as asking a legitimate question. But because it's Bob and we need Bob to understand this, because once he gets this, it'll make it it'll make the argument a lot easier. Then I'll, it's worth a dedicated video so that Bob can see that I'm addressing it directly with demonstration, not real world, but simulation. But everybody gets it, right? So I yeah. focused on Bob in the medium of water 
And if I pull Bob down into more dense water and let go, he's going to go up. If I pull Bob up and let go, let go of Bob, he's going to go back down. So I've used the density tower because water just happens to be in the middle. And I've put Bob in the middle and I've explained to him that if the ladder was in water and Bob jumped off the ladder, depending on what his relative density to the medium of water is, he'll either go up or down. Now, Bob's generally got less muscle, so he's going to be more buoyant than water. So he's generally going to rise up. So we wouldn't jump off the ladder and go down. In water, Bob would go up. But somebody that's very athletic and muscly is going to go, he's going to jump off the ladder in water and he's going to go down because he's more dense than the medium he's in. So it's just a density tower demonstration, and hopefully Bob's going to get it. And uh, I just couldn't help with a little dig at the end. I played Britney Spears saying, don't let me be the last to know. <laughs> so save Bob. <laughs> at the end, it's real. <laughs> Have you seen it, 10th? No, I just get on the show and follow what you're saying, but uh, I was envisioning it. Yeah, you should watch it because we're going to be talking about chocolate scene. He's going to, we're going to talk about it at some point in a bit. So if you've seen it, it would help you if you know what's been said so that you can relate to it when it comes up. It's on your channel because I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, it's just been uploaded in the last 15 minutes. How long is it? About six minutes, seven minutes. Okay, I'll be back. Yeah, it's good, man. It's the most concise that I can get it with demonstrations, pictures, like concepts, whatever you want to call it, illustrations to make the point. And the guy that he was talking to in chat called Calypso, Calypso gets it. So because Calypso gets it and most other people get it, then Calypso gets it was the, the, the title of the video. You know, like Witsit gets it. Calypso now gets it too. Brill. But hopefully you'll get the message now. Hopefully you'll realize that maybe there is something to this. And that is the reason. Because I also said as well that because we're in the medium of water, I can force Bob to move. Bob doesn't want to move. Bob doesn't like doing stuff. He doesn't like being, doing as he's told, right? But I can make Bob move by changing the density of the medium around Bob. If I make it more dense, then Bob's going to dis uh, the medium will displace Bob because it's more dense than Bob. And that'll push Bob up in his language or towards the less dense in my language because it's pressure is pushing it and i said that and, and, de and i demonstrated it with the egg i used the egg and i said that bob's be basically become the egg i can push bob out of his position with changing the medium's density and that makes my point perfectly and it's i can't get it any more concise very yeah, good so i did i did respond to your comment in um i can't remember which chat feed it was in in skype but yeah i did make a comment about that you talking about the ladder example somebody left some screenshots was it chocolate did you say yeah chocolate and you said if he farted in the medium what would he say no i said if he was up the ladder and... please don't say that on the show <laughs> yeah okay I'll, I'll repeat my example if he farted up the ladder would the fart go down no because if you fart in the bath which way do the bubbles go the farts go up why is that because the fart bubbles the gas coming out your bottom is less dense than the medium of water in it and that's why you get bubbles Right, but it, it, any gas, regardless of this rather gross example that I used for humorous effect in a private chat feed that's now public, <laughs> thank you, Anthony, <laughs> is that the gas is, regardless of what it is, expands in all directions, right? It's not just got a downward vector. Well, that completely flies in the face of an idea of a downward vector. So it's medium-specific, <laughs> and that's the bit you're focused on, and you're right. But gas completely violates this idea of a an overriding down because it has an expansion in all directions to fill the availability of its container regardless of which direction the containment is in it's going to find that by expanding in all directions and then the other thing of course is that if we can demonstrate the cause of the effect it means that by definition if you want to infer that there's a secondary cause then that means that you're making essentially the claim that it's not a cause it's a correlation only and therefore the burden then falls on you to demonstrate that the the, the correlative effect that you believe you're seeing show that second cause so obviously electromagnetic what do you call it dial incoherent uh, dielectric so I, hadn't, I hadn't interrupted that you till this point but i'm going to now right this was discussed you were there so how do we how was the conclusion drawn with you me not saying very much <laughs> dr john d quantum racer and there was someone else who i can't remember there was several people in a group adam of course it was and after a lot of complicated discussions most of which were way above my pay grade the conclusion was drawn that it's a second order effect of entropy and it makes sense when you say well things that are pushed out of equilibrium will want to return from whence they came that would be equilibrium well that's 
almost, it's not, but it's almost like describing entropy. Well, that's because it's a second order effect of entropy. That was the conclusion that was drawn after about a week of discussion. So, well, what is it? How do you describe it? What, what's, how do you categorize it? Because obviously it needs to be specific if you're going to start detailing what is now concisely described as relative density or in the case of the example given up the ladder, relative density disequilibrium. Well, uh, to be fair, I was just grateful that he described it as relative density in the, in his conversation with what's his face, the guy, uh, what was his name, Calypso. Um, he called it relative density. Now, prior to that, I'd been noticing him calling it density buoyancy. So the fact that, and in my last video, I said don't call it density buoyancy because you're misleading people because of obviously the gravity connection with with buoyancy. Just call it relative density. That is the the counter argument. And he's he's just, to be fair to him, he's used the correct phrase. He's asking questions, and obviously then you have the conversation. But how does it get concluded? Well, I would just say one word: experiment. For what? To figure out why the effect happens. It's a second order effect of entropy. You're telling me you want to put entropy through the method. Okay, be my guest. Nobel Prize waiting for you if you figure out the cause of entropy. Well, maybe Bob could do that. Maybe you could get a Nobel Prize. Boom, boom. I think this will... I've got to agree with QE. The more I ponder it, this is going to be forever illusionary. They're never going to know what this is. We're never going to well, elucidate the, to the cause. That. The way to describe it is the same as the description that you would have for why does hot go to cold? Ah, why in that stop, direction? Stop, stop, stop. That's just a description. You can describe <laughs> it verbally, poet poetically, mathematically. Descriptions aren't explanations, though, are they? So when you say, I want the cause, well, you're looking for an explanation of why something happens as opposed to a description of what's happening. Well, you can describe to your heart's content the second law of thermodynamics. Laws of nature are just descriptions of what occurs always. Well, yeah, that occurs always and I can describe it. Why does it happen always? That would be to put it through the method and establish the cause of entropy. And I don't think that's ever going to be elucidated by anybody. That's the reason why I was trying to compare it with temperature. If hot always goes to cold, why does it do that? No, nope, it just does. That's just the way it is. Does that mean that it's not science because we can't d explain why? No, it just means that that is the way it is. Tough shit. It's just the way. It's almost as if God designed it that way. That's my answer. Well, you don't have to go that far. It's got a description in, in, in modern vernacular. It's a law of nature. So hot going to cold is I'm an entropy increase, it right? It's an entropy increase. That's all hot to cold is. Yeah. It's, it's honestly when you when you word it like that there's just no more it's so obvious and easy to understand it's because the reason is they've hijacked pressure because we can't see pressure as a force right we can't see what is going on it, it, it allows you to wonder is there is there something else doing it because you can't see it but if there was a big a big arm pushing something and it moved then you'd say that the arm was the force right because you can see the arm but because pressure is not visible you can you can take pressure out of it, call it something else, gravity perhaps, and then think that there's something else going on. But when you when you realise actually the line to us, and this is the, the the cause was adding the mass that changed the pressure, and the pressure pushed the egg back to its equilibrium. That's what we're seeing, and we can test it. And when you realise that they've hijacked pressure because it's invisible and called it ma magical gravity, then it all becomes no longer a charade. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting that uh, your positive spin on it is that the the stage has been reached, like it like it did with you and Arwen several years ago, right? That's what you're kind of commending, or what? That's what I gleaned from what you were saying. You're like, well, at least the questions being asked and the debates being had. Well, that positive spin wasn't that my positive spin about a fortnight ago, Anthony. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Probably. Probably it was. <laughs> it was precisely what it was while you were all frustrated and taking it personally. Oh, I'm just trying to... Oh, sorry. I'm trying to influence his perception. If he's asking genuine questions and he's not outright dismissing it, then it makes sense to make it a constructive counter and address it. Um, exactly. Rather than flippantly dismiss it with Kurt, exactly. and, with, with Kurt and crude dismissal. Exactly. Couldn't agree more. Positive things are happening. Also, in Arwin's show today, I was listening along, and he's like, something the 10th man mentions often, he's like, where are all the ballers? 
And prior to me listening to his show, I was thinking about it myself. And I'm like, well, number one, I quite like it. We get to have conversations. There's no aggravation. But it looks terrible, right? Realistically, without sounding too arrogant, we've won. There is no rebuttal to anything we put forward here from the Globe side. We have exposed it as a religious belief. There's nothing they can do about that and there's nothing they can respond to because anything they try to respond to is immediately rebutted. So there's no... There's seeming comebacks that have already been demolished that don't come up anymore. And beyond that, they have literally nothing to offer anymore. Well, I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> you know, now it's just time to spread the word. Spread the word. The globe died here. Now just spread the show around because it's not getting spread naturally. Yeah. We've won, right? That's, we're that's having a true. we're having a chit chat amongst ourselves with Bob Nodal. Happy days. What a lovely position to be in. Yeah, their absence uh matches that the uh, summary you just gave. Our worst adversary at the moment is a dude on our own side. The comes on our side. So it's like that's that's what we've yeah. got to deal with. Well why? Well, because there's nothing from the other side. The other army might still be sat around their tables thinking that there's a war to be fought, but the battleground is now just an empty hole. <laughs> it's just a giant crater. So they get there if they ever decided to pick up their arms and walk over, and they'd realise that there's just a giant chasm where they thought they had a, a fundamental, well, let's call it like it is, they thought they had a sphere edge. <laughs> now there's just an empty hole. <laughs> and beyond that, a flat earth where we're standing. What did you think, Kent? Well, uh, if he doesn't get equilibrium after that, he's more dense than we thought. But it's the boom, clearest boom. and the most concise that I can get it. No, I, it's it's simple. I, mean, I think he's holding out. Especially I think he's holding out for the. I'm sorry. Especially, um, I think he's holding out for the Nodel Prize. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one, uh, on, especially no, the part what? Especially the part where you added the salt, he would go back up. That was good. That that's the hopefully that's the bit that he's going to get because if I make Bob move because I add salt and he he then has to move because he's pushed because of the change in the density of the medium. If I make him move and we know that's going to happen, hopefully that'll be the bit that he goes. Oh shit! Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I mean that. If you've seen the egg experiment and then you watch what you just did and then you say, well, I know how to make a move and he doesn't have to do a thing. <laughs> I had salt to that water, he said. Yeah, boom, yeah. the light goes up. Hopefully. No, it goes on. I mean, you can deny it. I've been to the Dead Sea. You can't sink in that thing. <laughs> it's got so much salt, to, you, know, you can almost walk on it. Another way of looking at is this. It that, is, it that, is it that strong? Oh, yeah. Yes, I mean, is, you, yeah. you just can't get the stuff in your eyes and it's because it's got crazy chemicals. But uh, you just, I mean, I've seen people of all sizes there. Just, you cannot see. There's people just sit. You can literally fold your knees toward your chest and just bob, uh, <laughs> pun not intended there, but, and read the newspaper. All right, Anthony, it's like it's, you're sitting okay. down. It's like when you and Arwen discussed it. It was an expansion of everyone around you's understanding as you went back and forth with Arwen on the exact same subject. And at the end of it, everyone benefited. Now, this is the same exact scenario, but with Bob Nodell instead of Arwen. Well, that's higher profile within our own community, which can only benefit the understanding of people who are watching. So, to me, this is very good. And again, it's thanks, it to, thanks to a bit of rest bite. Right, we've had a bit of respite. Where's where's the fundies coming in with their nonsense? <laughs> so we've got to be a respite, and now we can do things like this, which benefit everybody. Great. I think the fundies have been reassigned to the jab, haven't they? You know the coroni stuff. They're not here anymore for the moment. So I think while they're out the way, we can have more constructive conversation, which is miles better. But to be honest, I think you've got to give Bob a little bit more credit because he, he was genuinely asking more of a neutral question than the loaded dismissal that he always gives, normally always gives. He was a lot more neutral by asking the question. And because he did that, I didn't attack. Well, not too hard. Well, he's asking a question that's uh, a similar question that we've been asked by people on the Globe side, admittedly several years ago. But that was a, a question. I mean, as soon as I read it, I was like, okay, 
that's something a globe would ask us and has asked us. I bet I could find, <laughs> if I had the time, a question verbally being put to us. If I go up, why don't I carry on going up through the thinner air? Yeah. Fight the Flat Earth would be my citation for that. I knew there was somebody high profile. I just couldn't. He was on the tip of my tongue. So Craig actually said it, didn't he? Yes, yeah, he, he did. did. Yeah, Fight the Flat Earth said it. We've, Like I said in my video, it was like we had this like years ago. Fight the Flat Earth said the exact same thing that Bob's asking. So I know that Bob's not being a troll. Now, it's very easy to read that he was being a troll in the question because that was how some people took it. But I realize he's on the path. What is it? The four stages of acceptance, Nathan? All right, five stages of loss. Five stages of loss. What is so by asking that question, he's moved from one of the stages into another stage. So what what are they? Well, from well, he's actually at the third stage, I believe it is. He's a he's at the bargaining stage. So there you go. Um, so he's violent gone. opposition comes second after denial, and then I believe it's bargaining. Then so depression. he's bargaining now. He's asking the legit, legitimate question, and that needs to be praised because it allows me to give the opportunity. It gives me the opportunity to talk to him and, and demonstrate that this is what's going on. Uh, now, if he wasn't at that stage and he was still yeah, at well, the, if you're what, right, the stage before, but if you're right, there's two problems, and we experience this daily, or we did <laughs> for whatever reason. We were having a bit of a respite, but that's great by me. You can either go forward, and that's a very difficult step because the next step is depression prior to acceptance so you've got to you know kind of deal with the fact that you've got it wrong it's a bit like isle of man right when we first figured out that we couldn't see where were we looking for again i forget now <laughs> wasn't it was scotland in mountains in ireland, wasn't ireland that was it we were looking to see ireland we, we thought we could see it it seemed like we could see it when we modeled it and then we couldn't well we were wrong we called it as ireland and we were wrong well at some point you've got to accept the depressing truth that you're wrong and then move on. Acceptance, right? But more likely than not, based on experience here in Flat Earth Debate, what people do is regress. So they either regress to, you know, outright denial or anger. So, you know, well, this is just stupid might be the end result once you've actually got your point across in a concise way that you feel has been at least listened to and partially understood. It might just be regression one or two stages back from bargaining to flat out denial or, you know, anger. Well, you're just an idiot. Yeah, the, ultimately that's what's going to be his decision to make, isn't it? And hopefully he's going to be man enough to say, maybe, maybe there is something in this. But we can all make a prediction about what we think might happen here. And, you know, we can all do that pretty easily. But I just hope that he just accepts that the scientific method is telling you that the thing that you manipulate is the cause. And if sure. you manipulate it and it does yeah. cause the effect then that is the cause. But if you want to infer that there's extra causes, you've got to demonstrate that. And I did demonstrate that the egg accelerated by changing the medium, the density of the medium. But if you think the egg can, it can accelerate with something else, then you've got to demonstrate that. Otherwise, it's just, a, it's just a theory. On the bright side, I don't think there's any shame in this. It's like we're talking about a very uh, critical or crucial key cornerstone to the heliocentric belief and that's gravity so to have it as a flat earther and have to relinquish it it's like hmm, yeah it's just another thing that turned out to be another part of the deception that we are living under well there's no i don't think there's any shame in that personally and likewise with arwen when you discussed it i positively encouraged it and after the fact there was absolutely no shame on either side and I don't think that should be the case here either. You know, at some point, somebody's position, yes, we already know the outcome. Yes, it's been discussed for many years here. But that doesn't mean that, you know, that's being watched. At the time we were discussing it, you know, Bob and I were definitely not even on speaking terms. So for that reason, he undoubtedly wasn't watching. Well, therefore, it's kind of like, well, you know, encouraging people to share the show, maybe not be enough when you need some bridges built between the community. Well, you know, that's not a difficult task when the thing that's asked, being asked to relinquish is part of heliocentric uh, indoctrination, in this case, gravity. So, like I say, I think that limits the, sh the, the, the difficulty to move from the bargaining stage to the depression stage to the acceptance stage. That could be a very easy transition when it's, as I say, giving up something that's potentially actually damaging to your own cause in the case of gravity. 
So, I don't know. I don't think it'll be that difficult to move on. We'll see. Well, that was a good summary because the, I think we can all agree the best results come from friction and debate because you got one side, it doesn't matter what the topic is, you got one side pushing this angle because that's the way they see it. And then the other side sees us slightly differently and they're pushing that angle and they're just button heads for a while. But they both are moving closer towards a much purer answer so that both of them have to perhaps give up something from the angle in which they view it to arrive at the position that it is because then the bias got kicked out due to the friction and all you have is the beautiful argument and the answer. I think ultimately, no matter how you describe this, it is a positive. But it came from the approach originally. If the approach would have been Kurt, it wouldn't have happened. It wasn't Kurt, so it did happen. Let's just see what happens next. Well, that's life. It is what it is. And look where we are now. You made a video. It's nice. And that Calypso response was good. And now we're, we're one step closer to trying to get a better understanding. Yeah. Indeed, very diplomatic of you, Tenth. By the way, Tenth, this... what did you th what did you think of my level of uh, response? Was I a bit too harsh, or do you think that it was? Well, because I tried was... to make it jovially harsh, but like enough for him to get the message. Well, it was fine until the end when you threw the spear at him. <laughs> yeah, that was the the last bit. Was <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping he'll laugh. I hope he laughed. I meant spear. Yeah, like... the spear. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spear I'm thinking about. You threw no, a spear. It's, it's, it's okay to kid around. I mean, it, it shows that you're okay with them and you want a relationship, so it's not a big deal. <sighs> gravity. Oh, the gravity. It did us all for 100 years, all. though. <laughs> it did us all for 100 years, 10th. Yeah, I mean, it's. I just have to go back to when I first heard this stupid word. I mean, I was in school and they started teaching it and I had no clue what the heck they were talking about. It's like, oh, okay, so what do you do? You don't really argue with it, but then when they started tying other things to it, that's when I raised my hand. I go, well, how can that be? How can that be? How can that be? And so and I like, no, I... No, go ahead. There's two, there's two key things there. One is that you've not had the time since to even consider it because life gets in the way. That You've been kept busy by a lifestyle, right? Whatever that lifestyle is, you've been kept busy. But the other thing is, how would it be that in the olden days, everybody thought that the earth was flat? Because that's what we get told. In the olden days, everybody thought the earth was flat. Mm -hmm. For them to change that paradigm, they would have to either need a slow transition that was sincere and genuine or a fake one that relied on a massive world distraction event that might be called a war, for example, where they could rewrite the education system. And that's exactly what happened in World War I. But it seems that it wasn't enough because Einstein changed gravity from a cause to an effect in World War I. It seems that they needed another world event to, to, cut, to, to change it enough because there was too many people around. They then had a second world war, but you would need something at that scale to be able to cause the paradigm shift in a short period of time because a lot of people wouldn't be looking at science whilst there's a war going on with Germany. They'd all That's be talking all you about Messerschmitt. No, you don't need a war. You don't need a war. All you need is the fact that if you take quantum mechanics, for an example, Average show is not aware of it, despite the fact that it's highly discussed and understood in academia. So in the same instance, when you've got paradigm changes within the realms of academia with Einstein, that doesn't make any difference to your average Joe and what he thinks. Quite the contrary. That just slowly filters in. Given that we've got people who come at trench level talking to us about the 105-year out-of-date, incorrectly named Newtonian gravity, says it all. The fact that 105 years ago it transitioned well, it wasn't abrupt, was it? 105 years later, they're still talking about Newton. Yeah, but that's only because the kids are getting taught that in school, not necessarily because science is talking about that. Which is a good uh, point for me to dovetail from, because right now we're into the next thing that they're doing, which is scientocracy, scientism. So with everything that's going on currently, as well as everything on our subject title, it's... Uh, this is what the science says. This is what the science shows. This is what the guy in the lab coat says. This is what Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's got a PhD, blah, blah, blah. I, I, except 
when you put it to the test and you ask questions like from a show like ours, they all crumble, they don't show up anymore, and it dies. But the masses are being told, well, that's what the science says, we gotta do it. I had this argument with my mom. I said, look, it's pseudoscience. Why do you keep calling pseudoscience science? Science is science. Yeah, I had the same conversation a couple of nights ago <laughs> with my mother. Oh my gosh, it's hard, isn't it? She's, she used to be a nurse, so on some level she understands what I'm saying when I talk about it in context with medicine, which is easier at the moment as it's on everyone's mind. So I contextualise it with something that's in the news, therefore she's got an interest in it, and she got it. She understood. Yeah, well, my my mom watches the state programming, you know, public, uh, public NPR and all these different media channels, and I don't watch TV, so... Uh, and she knows I don't watch TV, but she knows I get my information from somewhere. So she goes, well, you gotta get it from somewhere. So you are watching something. And I go, yeah, I choose to make sure that whatever I watch matches reality. How about you? Well, you research it, right? It's not about what you watch. It's about how much you digest it and accept it on face value. And 99% of people who are watching a television set just accept what they see at face value. All of it, There's no, no questioning involved. Just blind acceptance. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was the point. So, so I'm happy to discuss it, um, but it gets to a point where the logic of the facts destroy their foundation. In this case, my my dear mom, and I could see that literally she'll get her fingers and put it in her ear and say, "I don't want to talk anymore." And again, I gotta respect her; she's in her 80s, so and I love her. Would you like a? A snippet that QE sent me. I never get to listen to them because I don't boot the computer, or at least I yeah. don't b boot this software that I'm using to run the show on the computer. It's normally used to play you know, Mighty Pups or whatever the kids are watching. You know what I mean? Anyway, do you want to listen? Yeah. It's called I don't know what this is, so hopefully it's not explicit in any way. I doubt it, knowing QE, but it's called Bearded Devil. We'll see what it is. The Baltard Road Scholar, Bearded Devil, twenty-one December. 2020 and many words mean the same thing that's why they call them similes Okay. Very good. <laughs> I don't know why these people don't look at the word that they're actually saying. And they've got their own contextual meaning for the word, obviously, as just demonstrated. They don't look at the word itself. Like simile, similar. Why, why would you not look at it like hemisphere? The amount of fundies in my chat on the premiering streams that will say, I'm not assuming a sphere. And you go, you use the word hemisphere or atmosphere. <laughs> and they're like, that doesn't mean I'm assuming a sphere. Like, Look at the word. It's got the word sphere in it. Are you thick? Clearly, the answer <laughs> is yes. Oh, that's great. But it's the begging the question all the time. Like you said, when that one guy told you, they always start with begging the question. Well, we experience it whenever they come. So I credited Validation Boy for that. And then <laughs> Quantum Eraser one day came up to me and says, you know, you credit Validation Boy for pointing out that every single globe argument starts with the assumption that you're on a sphere. I was like, yeah. He says, yeah, you got that from me on Cathexis's channel. I was like, oh, did he? I was like, I didn't know that. So like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, hey, good, gonna, uh, all good arguments seem to lead to QEA. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to send a pick and master just before you start the show. 
just uh, this presentation I'm trying to do on the sextant is so detailed and so long that I have to take a break just because I'm overloaded with too many things. I got to shorten it, and so I just can take a break and send you this uh, one slide. If sextant, then Tiffany Dover. Tiffany Dover, therefore sextant. Called an affirming the consequent formological fallacy, and it has absolutely no bearing on the subject matter that I'm trying to warm you all up for in the pre-show. <laughs> Tell me when you got it. I've got it. All right, so the audience could see when you have two parallel lines and you draw another line through it uh, that I guess in geometry that's called a transversal but you can see what they do in the trick is that they got the sun's rays coming in parallel so you see two of them and one's hitting the top of the surface of the ball where there's an angle and the other one's hitting the center of the earth where there's an angle and because they're parallel lines the angle will always be the same when you have a transversal. In this case, that zenith line coming through the top, going through the center, just imagine and keep it going as well through the end of, the, say, the South Pole or so forth. So that angle is the same. So when uh, Aristosthenes in Cyan uh, saw the sun directly overhead and no shadows on either side and was lit up at the bottom as well, that's the zenith position. And so 500 miles in Alexandria, there's a little shadow cast by some pillar or pole or tree. It doesn't matter. And they're saying because the sun's coming in parallel, uh, that could only mean one thing. You live it on a curved surface. The only problem is that the sun doesn't come in parallel. It comes divergent, so he was wrong there. And that would work on a flat plane. But it can't work here because no one ever goes to the center of the Earth to take a sextant reading for an angle. It's always done at the surface, and you can see they, uh, they give it away with the tangent plane that they need up there. So every time you see this, they have that plane, as uh, Brian's logic talked about with the Cartesian coordinate system and GPS. So they do it on the plane, and then they fold it up and go to another place on the Earth and do it there. They need flat Earth to be movable, because that's yep. the only way the sextant works. It's on exactly, plane, and, what, you need and they do it with the zenith. They do it with the zenith. So they take the zenith, in this instance it's pointing at 90 degrees, right? So it's straight up from the top of the ball. Whereas if you're using this as your tangent plane based on your zenith because you're at the North Pole, then when you're in England, you assume that the zenith, which let's let's just say that for the sake of this example, the second line with GP is pointing to the centre from England. So England's on the surface here. Well, when you're standing here, you're standing straight up, but the assumption is that that is now your zenith. Well, a zenith is from the top of your head down towards the center of a presupposed spherical Earth. So when you move, you end up with a new tangent plane because you've got a new zenith. Well, where do you get the zenith? Well, it's not based on anything to do with your position because you've got a plumb line running down that could give you the same thing. That's your zenith. Well, a plumb line runs straight down. It doesn't run at an angle towards the center of a presupposed spherical Earth. So that's how they beg the question. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, that's all right. That was, that's exactly my point. I'm, I'm fishing for another picture here. Uh, so my, my point is, once I'm through with it, and I think it's pretty obvious now, is that the sextant can only work on a flat plane because you need two straight lines or two rays uh, to meet at a corner. Uh, that would be your vertex. Okay, so that's your point. And the surface picture is, the, say, the navigator on the boat taking the reading. And uh, when it meets at a point, that's a corner, and that's where you get the angle. They've got it going to the center of the Earth because it can't work without it, because the sun's rays have to also come in parallel, but they don't. And I've got tons of imagery for that. This The sextant will be the year, 2021 will be the year of the sextant, uh, I'll boldly say, whereas 2020 was the year of the black swan, because we're going to take a navigation tool that everyone agrees works, and I'm going to show that it can only work on a flat plane. It can't work on the ball, ever. Did I leave a long enough dramatic pause? <laughs> I'm still looking I just thought picture. you were going to start. I just assumed that you were going to start at the perfect time for you. No, no, we've still got four minutes. 
Yeah, yeah. Two. Thank you. No, oh, two minutes. Something like that. Yes, oh, um, yeah. I can't wait I can't for that really conversation. Yeah, I, I, I hope that is the case. I hope 2021 is the year of the sextant. Great year. <laughs> so anything with sex in it's great. Okay. <laughs> sextant, marvellous. <laughs> Keep it nice. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, I'll, uh, this ain't the one, but it's close enough. Because I know you got to okay. start the show. Tell me you got up. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Get down, because I was about to start. But okay, I've got your last picture up just before we do start. So go, there. go, go. Okay, yeah. So you can see here, they've got you in the celestial sphere, the outer circle around the Earth. And then that thing you see with the zenith and that <laughs> that plane, that's the horizon in the circle around you. And you got you to gotta move that around every time you take a reading. You need a flat plane to make it work. Right. In other words, what you're doing is you're transposing this circular area, which is what you would call... I've just got to admit somebody and then get it back up on screen. That would be the tangent plane. So exactly. this is perfect because that's, you know, give or take England's over here somewhere. You know, the angle's close enough. So, you know, this is somewhere in the States. I don't know where they've got it pointing to precisely because the tangent plane depiction itself is in the way. But they're saying that when you drop a plumb line from this position, what you see is a straight line downwards is automatically assumed to be pointing out on this angle. And the flat surface they're actually measuring is going to be this circle, which presents itself as a flat plane to you. Well, beyond the assumption that the zenith is pointing out at an angle, they've got nothing. They can't make that assumption is the point. And yeah, I can't wait for that presentation. It's going to be epic. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Sleeping Warrior, Neil. Let's see all the people who are trying to pile in right in the middle of my intro. Let's just admit all of these people one second. So we're joined by Sleeping Warrior, 10th Man, Arwin, Elijah, Neil, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome, one and all. Good morning, everyone. Hey, good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning, good morning from from New York. Hey, Skeptical. Hey, Rams. Didn't get any other hellos from Discord, but thank you for saying something. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give a quick nod to Arwin this morning, who pointed out how unbelievably quiet it's been. And 10th Man's been doing the same for a, a significant period of time in terms of just how quiet it's been from the fundamentalist religious zealot side of this argument. Now, Arwin was saying it with a little bit of sorrow, i.e. it's a lot of fun taking the fundies apart. Can you pop yourself on mute, please, whoever that is in Discord? A lot of fun taking the fundies apart. However, I'm not in the slightest bit sad about that. We've won. There is no rebuttal to any of our arguments that we haven't overcome so we've won 
The globe has nothing to offer anymore. Now, I'm more than happy to sit here and have discussions, and we were discussing in the pre-show how unbelievably diatful it is to be having an internal discussion about the whys and wherefores of up and down amongst flat earthers. How very quaint. Kumbaya, indeed. Well, that's because there's nobody challenging anything we actually put forth on the housekeeping questions. There's no rebuttal that hasn't been overcome. Therefore... There is no globe argument. It has been exposed here as a religious belief. Those are the facts of the matter as it stands. So the globe, as a religious belief, has been exposed here and there is no challenge to that. All challenges have been overcome. So we will continue with the housekeeping questions. Obviously, there's going to be people who come to this that don't see the typical raft of globe defending zealots coming here, but they're not going to be aware if they're new. So they might still wonder in when we're discussing something that seems off topic, something loosely related to the subject. And obviously, we'll still have to keep on our toes for that. But in the meantime, I'm more than content to discuss things amongst ourselves on the flat earth winning side of this argument where we do not have a fundamentalist globe religious belief. So with that, I'm going to ask the housekeeping questions. Feel free. Everyone is definitely off mute in Discord to answer oh, at will. Way. Go ahead, Owen. Yeah, I had a little technical uh, uh, update. Apparently now you can put links back in the chat. Like, it works again. Yesterday there was this issue where every time I did that, like, I it wouldn't even show up when I put it in the chat. Even removed all the, the, the code, the typical internet code in front of it. It just would not let it show. I sure. demonstrated it. Now, today yeah. it's all back. Excellent. So, so Somebody did point that out. Before... before... Before it gets lost, I would like to say you should uh, include the beginning bit of what you just said as like a regular intro. <laughs> I, I, that would be okay if I could remember what I just said. It was merely a preamble to warm you up to answer housekeeping questions, but I'll, I'll listen to it back and maybe I'll integrate it. I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it is a wonderful little speechette. <laughs> Thank you. I take that as a massive compliment, Elijah. <laughs> really appreciate it. Cup your mic when you're talking, just with your other hand, just wherever the mic is, just put like a cup your hand and put it around it and stop the wind noise. Anyway, let's get on with housekeeping. Any evidence of a physical sphere edge horizon, formerly known as no. Earth curvature? They never claimed it, even though they claim it right there and then when they show you proof of Earth curvature. You mean the horizon? Right. Yeah, the horizon's not physical. It's not blocking anything. Boats aren't going over it. It's not Earth curve. Just in case you didn't know. Any evidence of yes. axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Mr. Sense will ever given a response to that. Because I, we do kind of reference him in now with his mage balloon, where he said nobody claims a geometric horizon. Oh, right. Look, it's right there. Has he ever rebut, rebutted to that? No. He, he just faded what, back. What he did instead thing. was chase after me but via Tim, email and threatened to take me to the police. But Tim Osman. Oh, right. I heard about that. Tim I'm not Osmond even joking. Responded. That's that's his current Mr. that's his Sensible. current line of attack. So we point out that you don't have a physical geometric sphere for a horizon, and in defence, Mister Sensible threatened to shot me to the police. Are oh, these poor victims? They must feel so terrible. Yeah, but your first witness in your hang on. Go on, tenth. Oh, I had a frog in my throat. Sorry. Yeah, your first defense witness will be Tim Osman saying we never claim Earth curve was the fiscal horizon. <laughs> Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Negative. No, just the luminaries. Oh, I thought this might turn into a quoting people who are fundamentalist sphere of believing zealots and uh, but clearly not. <laughs> I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> Any evidence of the distance to the sun? A distance, you're saying? Indeed. A measurable distance to that intangible object before you say it. Right. It's going to be difficult. But, yeah. Uh, just for the What's benefit. The distance to that rainbow over there. Oh, let, wait, let's take a ruler from this position and move to the rainbow. Hey, wait, now that I've moved to where I thought the rainbow was, 
oh, suddenly the rainbow is way further into the distance. So that's, yeah, that's going to keep on happening. Just for an M's or oh, MN's reference, <laughs> I was talking about moderators posting comments with links. So on a, <laughs> Bullbusters, I couldn't promote my own show, so I spammed the link to my show like I usually do. And after the fact, everyone's like, yeah, your link didn't show up. I'm like, yeah, it's probably just a glitch. But that doesn't mean if you're a random viewer that you can suddenly spam my chat with links. Maybe absurd. And, and uh, MN. Anyway. Any evidence, scientific or otherwise, for gravity? Uh, how can you find scientific evidence for something that you don't even know what it is? Yeah, I was just going to say, what's gravity again? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> how can you have scientific validity if you don't know what the effect that you're actually studying is because you can't see it happening? What did Tyson say? We don't know. Move on. No, but yeah. I have one for a tent man. As a keeper. You hear that tent if, man? If they if make it up. a law, then they don't you need to it. explain the cause, do they? If they're giving a description of something that happens always, you'd expect it to happen always, but gas expands in all directions. There isn't a single downward vector at 9.8 metres per second squared. Skeptical, did you have something to ask Tenth Man? Is gravity a force or is it a force? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't you that was saying you had something for Tenth Man. It was me, Aramiston. Go ahead, Aramiston. Remember, uh, Tenth Man, conjunction, junction, what's your function? Remember the old cartoon from children? I figured since you're a pun master that I would be hearing that by now. Again, nothing. He's not even opening his mic for you, my friend. No scientific evidence of gravity then? Any single viable Good hypothesis. Question. Oh, but it's a very, very small amount of electrostatic energy that is insignificant and that causes the direction and blah, 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 blah. How about that? <laughs> that was epic. I'm totally convinced. Quick question. Uh, what causes things to fall towards the ground? I just said, try and keep up. Gas expands in all directions. It does not have a single downward vector flying in the face of the assertion that we have a downward vector. Do you understand? Yeah. Excellent. So things like gas don't go down, go boom, boom. Like bouncy balls poured into a fish tank. Those bouncy balls are merely solids that are more dense than the medium they're being poured through. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Nope. I still think that the whole molten iron core is just like a sloppy claymation solution to heliocentric nonsense, like the creation of it all. How can it sustain itself? I, I think it's so sloppy, really. It's it, it was fabricated as a concept to explain things away when it is right under our feet, supposedly, and none of the actual phenomena that would naturally come with all that are present. And I still can't get over the fact that they claim that it actually causes the magnetism, which is just so preposterous. It's childish, childishly ridiculous. Crazy. Great. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Uh, can we get past the first step? They've got plenty of first step adherents, so they see lots of phenomenon, right? Yeah, and then? Uh, then they can't get past that step. Oh, okay. then... And then it's a computer screen and streaming music. 
Is that a Dr. Hey, Becky don't dig? Talk, don't talk about Dr. Becky like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how we instantly know it's a Dr. Be- Dr. Becky reference. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? Any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? No. Need a container of some kind. Just disappears otherwise. Gas would fill the space, right? Containment. In all directions. Oh, no. Actual containment, and that has to abide by a standard where the containment would actually deflect gas pressure rushing. So it has to have qualities that would uh, equalize it to as if it were a physical object or being a physical object in order to contain the gas. Jesus, Alwyn, that was concise. Yeah, you need a physical barrier. That's right. Or something that is similar to a physical barrier that Um, would not in any way leave open space. A force cannot be a physical barrier. It would have to be a limit to space that would be as good as a physical barrier or literally a physical barrier. But the problem is, though, when we look from a high-altitude balloon and look down, it does look like all the gas is kind of pooled at the ground level. Why might that be if it looks like it's pooling as though there is like some kind of force pulling it back? Because I can't see it on any other way than it's it's gravity pulling it down. Please help me. Talking about clouds. That's because there's more gas concentration and moist down there. So you'll see it more because the daylight is also more down there in order to light it up for you to see it up here is less dense gas and there's not so much light shining into it in order for you to see it so that's maybe, why maybe i'm being pedantic but the word i focus on here was did you say c are you talking specifically about clouds as they undergo a phase change that you can actually visually identify in the sky below you as appearing to yeah, be well, gas because obviously any, any unless high altitude balloon you see the condensed clouds don't you as you're looking down and you can see that they're all on pretty much the same level that indicates to me that they're not dispersing in all directions the way you say if we were and not in a the fact that maybe, you can so. the fact that you can see them there implies that there's oxygen flowing to your eyeballs which implies to me that there's definitely gas there yeah so you, you have air blur up too you know you see there's air because there is blur up too my, my point is, though, that if the Earth, if we were in an open system and you say that the gas pressure would have expanded in all directions, but in real world we don't see that, then gravity. We do see that in real world. What are you talking about? No, we see that what looks like a layering in the atmosphere from high altitude balloon footage, Nathan. So no, we do not. It's not expanding uh, in sorry. all no, no, no. no, 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 stop. No, gas in the atmosphere, not that air takes a spherical shape is an inhomogeneous, anisotropic mixture of gases. It's not layered. Inhomogeneous, not layered. But it looks that way when we... It doesn't look anything. What are you talking about? Are we talking about clouds? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello, hello. What are we talking about looking like? Are you talking about clouds? Well, it looks that way to me, Nathan. What, clouds? Yeah. That's clouds. They're... They're changing state. They've reached a certain altitude, right? And then they're changing state, and they will eventually turn into a liquid and fall back to the ground. So they're in a a cyclical motion when they reach that point that you can look down upon them. But the fact that you can look down upon them heavily doesn't just imply, it absolutely confirms that there is gas there. And in equal quantities to what it would be on the ground, just at lower pressure. Well, the reason it's at lower pressure is because it's not being created there. When you look around from your hot air balloon, how many trees are creating oxygen? Not many, they're, but they're below, aren't they? Well, like a kettle when you boil it, the gas is created, it comes out of the spout in high concentration, and as it gets higher, it gets less. Well, it's the same with any other gas. It goes up, but the actual mixture, because we're in a dynamic system, basically remains the same at any altitude. So you've got a mixture of gases Less at altitude because they're not being created there. Not many trees on Everest, but people can still breathe there, right? They make a big deal about how they can go up and breathe there if they're extremely fit, (laughs) you know. But there's still gas there just in lower quantities because there's not many trees producing it at that altitude. Simple. 
Nathan, I don't want you to tell me about the biogeochemical cycle that I learnt when I was five in primary school. I want you to tell me that gravity causes this or that gas pressure can't exist without a container because not let's, biogeochemical let's start there. cycle. No, let's start with the gravity me. bit. Start with the gravity. Causes this. What's this? Be specific. Causes what? This collection of gas that at ground it's level that we all breathe. Though, I, I, I want to go back to this. I want to go back to this open system you were talking about. What open system were we talking about right now? Uh, the heliocentric model where we have a ball in a vacuum oh. and <laughs> and we have model. Hold yeah. on, what's your hold on, Chocolate, what's your objection? You said whoa. Oh, I said heliocentric model. Um we don't live on a model uh problem with open system in that heliocentric model. Because if we had an open system we wouldn't have any of this air that we're breathing. That's a problem. So I've got a picture of a uh, rough representation of the sphere Earth in the heliocentric model, i.e. it's a globe-shaped surface with ground upon it with people standing antipodal from one another. Anywho, so in that model, you've got this high-pressure gas that's supposed to be surrounding this ball, but then you've also got this vacuum of the sky above it all, uh, an empty available volume for the gas to fill. Well, the gas would just fill it if that model was correct. The heliocentric model that you suggested would be the answer to this non-occurring phenomenon. That would be gas going down, go boom, boom, like bouncy balls poured into a fish tank as asserted by PhD moron Thunderfoot Clown. Gas doesn't go down, Anthony. Expands in all directions. So, but we don't seem to see that, though, Nathan. So we, we must do. be getting affected by gravity. Well, did you, hold well, on. as far as hold the on. clouds are concerned, right? Hold on, we do see that. I've just described it. You're up in your balloon, you're up on Everest, and you've got the same mixture of gases to breathe. It's going in and out quite happily. You're not getting poisoned. There's less of it. You need to be extremely fit and efficient at processing the limited amount of gas. And that's other, other than that, there's still gas there. And there's a limited amount being created because it's being created at ground level. So if you're saying it all goes down and pulls on the ground, how can they breathe on Everest when there's very little vegetation creating any gas? Well, the answer is because it went up to the top of Everest. Right? It's made its way up. Got less as it did so like in my kettle example, all of which you've ignored. I know you're playing the fundy right now, but come on. I'm just pointing out that the gas pressure doesn't disappear into space like you say it must do if it was an open system, so it can't I didn't be say in, uh... When did I say... it? Right, there's no space. Right, Gas would fill a space in the heliocentric model you referenced because this is a low-pressure zone, i.e. a 10 to the minus 17 tor vacuum, according to their model, and you've got high-pressure gas that we're all breathing on the ground. Now, the fact that slightly above in reference to this model, less than one millimetre, you can say that there's less gas because it's not being created there, doesn't mean that the entire system requires containment, which this does not have. Therefore, this is a violation of natural law, the second law of thermodynamics violation. This is in direct violation of that. Entropy law would dictate that the gas we breathe would fill this space. We'd have no gas to breathe. We'd all be dead, according to this model, based on the second law of thermodynamics. No containment. I just wanted to point out that gravity seems to do the same thing, keeps it all here. It doesn't make gas go down. The gravity no, is a downward vector. It's only, it's only more at ground level because it's been created there, not because it's been pulled down from the sky where it was not created. It hasn't been pulled down at 9.8 metres per second. It's made at ground level, that's why there's more here, and it's gone up so people on Everest can still breathe it. Nathan, I don't want you to give me a valid equivalence by telling me about the biogeochemical cycle that I learnt when I was in primary school. I want you to accept that gravity pulls this stuff down. But it doesn't. Gas isn't I going down. How does it do that? I don't know. It it's doesn't do it. it how does it do it? Just... Hold on. So uh, Alwyn's immediately accepted that it does do this, and now he's asking about how. Let's validate the cause of this thing that doesn't happen. Gas does not well, go down, go boom, 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 like bouncy balls poured into a fish tank, as asserted by Thunderfoot Clown. That does not happen. Stop debunking me with the biogeochemical cycle, Nathan. I want gravity to be my reason. Okay, it's not happening, I'm afraid. actually believes this crap. <laughs> Please. There are none. They can't come in. <laughs> Please. Just oh, I don't know that. Out. Let's ask. <laughs> Let's ask. Hold on. We don't know that. Before we laugh, are there any gravity believers on the panel on the Discord server? Step right up. 
come on guys let's have somebody that genuinely believes this so that i don't have to basically argue something that i don't agree with i don't mind but how does it do that tony <laughs> how does it do what there's nothing happening now when you bastard <laughs> I just if want to point out Glober, then you're going to play a Glober all the way. That includes cognitive dissonance. Dead. Right, right. I, I, I'm laughing here, Arwin, because you're beautiful. You're excellent. You're epic. What Arwin's doing is saying, in spite of the fact that there's been a concise rebuttal, the way to win is to ignore that and start with the premise that it already exists. So then you don't have to justify yeah. whether or not it exists. Why does it happen? Well, what? Well, Arwin can then go into what happens in the model. Right, Owen? That would be a useful segue here. That's your next step. I know it is. I know you well. Next step, model. Right? How it works in that. Uh, Owen, do, my do main you have that model? With the, with the globe model is, in general, that they say this works to do that, but none of it is actually really well thought out. So when you then inquire, so how is that supposed to work? That's when they really start to get like, oh, uh, trying to fit these pieces. Oh, shit, this piece doesn't actually fit on the other one. Well, just can we pretend that it does? No, we can't. How does it fit? Uh, uh, Arwen, can, can I see that model? Do you have <laughs> that model? No, it's virtual. It, it's a concept. It's virtual? <laughs> yes. What the hell? <laughs> oh, well. We like to work at the really is level here. As in, with the physical and natural world? Right. Well, to get to the really is level, first you have to have a foundation of concepts that actually abide by reality. And then you can try to make it all fit. Well, yeah, the ballers think they have that, but they don't. So I like to then point out with every detail. So, okay, how is this supposed to work? Can you point out how it actually is supposed to be working not just describe it right and that's yeah, where it all breaks apart every yeah, time in the model in the model meanwhile in physical reality i don't need to start conceptualizing how models and philosophies work in order to appreciate and be a part of physical reality not only that people who are actually concerned with the world that they live in will deal in physical reality it's got a title too it's called physics I just want to point out yeah. that um, even though I was playing the, um, the the advocate for the other side, the 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 equal and opposing argument for why gra why gravity pulls the atmosphere down in the model is that that biogeochemical cycle. All the gases are created at ground level through many different cycles, and it gives the same effect. So the equivalent argument is the biogeochemical cycle. I just wanted to point that out because pe most people don't get the connection. Adam Meekin was quick to point out that you're better at the argument than the ballers are, and there's a good reason for that. To win, which we are absolutely doing here on Flat Earth Debate, please share the show far and wide, is to know your opponent's argument better than they do. Anthony knows every aspect of the Globus argument with gravity better than anybody here. I'm confident in saying that. Let's just look at who's on the panel. Uh, Arwin might be a close second, but uh, Anthony lives, breathes, and shits gravity. So he knows every aspect of every side of the argument. Therefore, he can argue it all day long as a baller and, and potentially win against flat earthers. Not against me, I might add. <laughs> you know, Excuse I, 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 me, se second place? No, no, no. I'm just as good. I'm just not obsessed with it. That's the difference. No. That's well, that's the, the difference, though. Make, that's the difference. I can argue it all day because I understand their argument. And when you were giving me the counter argument for why it appears that there's more pressure at sea level, and their argument is it's because of gravity, the equal and opposing argument is it's the biogeochemical cycle. And I wanted to emphasize that because most people don't make that connection. Godzilla's just had a nice little cheeky slant at his own, his own currency. This super chat is worth five Canadian dollars. But at the really is level, it's worth a dollar seventy-five. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, Godzilla. I really appreciate the support. Also, Pugsley Lovejoy sends a super chat. Aircraft carrier jets up for hold on, it's still the super chat is moving. Aircraft carrier jets up for an hour, flying in all directions, return to the same spot they took off from. And the carrier has not moved a thousand miles an hour with the globe. Right, on the equator, exactly. So the carrier would take off on the equator and according to their claim earth turns underneath at a thousand miles an hour well i massively shorten the flight time if it was going west and you'd be fighting against earth turn if you were going east 
well, that doesn't happen. <laughs> but they say it does. They say you can observe it from the ground as Coriolis def deflection. Well, no, that doesn't happen. Thank you very much indeed for the super chat, Pugsley. A close second, Darwin, but yeah, and you immediately admitted why. You know, I'm not saying Anthony is obsessed with that. It's a bit derogatory. But, you know, he knows, <laughs> he just argues it a lot more than you do. You're more than happy to branch into. I can't even remember what you were you talking about this morning. You don't have to say it, Nathan. It is very apparent. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. That's okay. I'm not obsessed with it, but you can think that I'm obsessed with it. Does that make me obsessed with it? Not obsessed. No, it just <laughs> makes you in denial of with your obsession. <laughs> I want to show hey, I know I'm not going to get any points here from the panel, these. guys, but uh, Anthony, if you know so much about gravity, how come you won't jump on a debate with Austin or Bob? Because I'd rather debate Bob, because obviously Austin's his minion, and but I say that in a nice way, and he's arguing by proxy. I would rather deal with it with Bob, and then therefore, uh -oh. if Witsit loses, then I can deal with Bob personally, and Bob can't pass it off as all. Well. It's just Witsit having a bad day. So, Does you'd have a convo with Bob? Can we set that up? Say again? Can we set that up? I've been trying for weeks. It was my dedicated video a week ago. You won't do it. Yeah, I know. If I, if I want to talk to someone, I hit them up. I don't I don't make videos about them. Uh, it's way beyond that. Uh, hold, on. hold on. Hold on. Let's just clear the air with Nathan. No, no, no. It's way, 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 way beyond that. Yeah, I'm just tried for not that impressed with Anthony's explanation of gravity, to be honest. So to hear you say, oh, Anthony knows more about this than anyone. I'm like over here chuckling. Okay. Oh no, fill did me in. Hold on. I just wanted did, to get Anthony. Hold on, Anthony. Hold on, Anthony. Anthony. Hold on, just one second, Anthony. Can you repeat what you said before um, Nathan's last statement, which was to say you've tried for years? Can you just get that cleared? Yeah, I've tried to speak with Bob about this. He will not talk to me about it for a very long period of time, blocked, Nathan. You haven't for, blocked for, on YouTube for the last two years. Just, sorry, Nathan. I just want to get this detail out of the way. Right. This, this isn't a case of him just needing to get pick up the phone to him. Right. He has attempted to for a very long period of time. So this isn't like some new thing that he hasn't approached. I just don't want that to be left unchecked. Oh, That's all. Nathan, I was in the comments on YouTube two weeks ago asking Anthony to do a debate and he declined and then gave me six, seven paragraphs about why he won't debate. And that was extremely no gamma. OK, it's There's just no like point, no. if you're right, jump on the debate. Stand your ground and air it all out. It doesn't matter if it's fucking Austin or his union or who it is. That's all gamma bullshit, bro. Just step up to the plate well, and defend matter. your argument. It does. Am I speaking to Austin now? Is this Wits It Gets It? Are you talking oh, to Nathan so Thompson? Yes, this is Wits It Gets It. Uh, hello, it's Nathan Thompson. He's just asking you Give me a direct a break, question. Bro. Why haven't you Give debated break, it? Dude. You've been given an opportunity to debate uh, it. It seems like you've turned it down. Let's just hear the reasoning. Hold on, Nathan. Let's just hear his answer. Go ahead, Sleeping Warrior. The reason I turned him down is because if, if basically, if I do the debate and I demonstrate my point and then d point out to my opposition that he can't demonstrate his point so it falls outside of scientific method and into pseudoscience, Bob will just pass that off by proxy as a loss just against him. But he won't accept any responsibility for himself that he might be losing because he's trained that guy. So by arguing about a proxy argument is, is pointless. It has to come from source. That's why I rejected it. And I want to say this, Elijah here speaking. Hey, Nathan. I love Witsit. Uh, that being said, I get triggered right here on the show. That being said, I want to see this debate between Sleeping Warrior and Bob, period. And I'm up for it. That's why I put the request on so that he could um, liaise back and forth with Quantum Eraser and set it up. <clears throat> yeah, I talked to Bob last night and it seemed like for the last two years, he's of the perspective you're avoiding a debate. So let's just set it up. No. It's, get, it's over. We'll just do it. No, no big deal. Oh, hold on, hold on. I, 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 I gotta, hold on, gotta... hold on. Just hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again, Nathan Thompson, just so we can get some clarity. Because if there's a, a position that Bob's under the impression that Anthony's reluctant, then clearly that implies that Bob is keen. Am I wrong? Yeah, from what I'm getting from Bob is that Anthony's avoiding the debate. So, Anthony, when are you free? Let's set up the debate. 
I'm free anytime and I'll get out of bed to do it. So you set it up anywhere you want, even on Globebusters, and it can be moderated or not. I don't care. I'll do it anywhere, anytime, and I'm ready now. So you tell me. Cool. Let's do it. Good times, dude. I mean, I, I like mean, that answer. Nate, I love you guys, dude. brother. <laughs> I love you too, brother. But let's to keep it 100. Uh, Sleeping Warrior has never avoided this particular debate with Bob or this particular discussion. Yeah. He's okay, been wanting he to have this. He avoided the debate with Austin, and now he's just claiming Austin's one of his minions, and Bob has trained him to uh, apparently. Like, yeah, but this this, this was popped off way before Austin was even on the scene. That that's what you gotta. I know. Uh, you gotta, I, remember, I, remember, I, remember Tony, I know you know that. <laughs> I remember Tony asking Bob for a debate on Gravity two years ago. I was gonna say <laughs> so, that's yeah, why I said bro, I've like, got clarity on that. Alvin. Old and busted already. Just, yeah, just yeah, do, I, do I want a white knight for wits it every time someone that that I know who's also um, I consider a friend <laughs> doesn't you know, share the same kind words or sentiments. Yeah, I do. But, I mean, it is what it is. Everybody's not going to like everybody. But the more important thing is, Tony has wanted this debate for a long time. Since I've been on this show, about a year. I've, I've wanted this debate since Jaron first brought it up on Globebusters and Bob basically dismissed it. The minute he dismissed it, I was like, well, why are you dismissing it? And then he starts to give his reasoning and I'm like, all of those reasons may sound plausible and sound reasonable and, you know, scientific if you wish, but they're outside scientific method and they're actually a representation of pseudoscience by definition. So if you go back to when it was that Jaron first brought it up on Globebusters, that's when I wanted the conversation and that must be at least, it's more than 12 months, it's got to be about 18 months ago. Yeah, but I've heard it said on this panel here that natural laws don't follow the scientific method. They don't. Yeah, it's because they're behavior. Okay. They so if entropy and things go down, boom, boom, is a natural law, well, then it would be outside of scientific experiment. Yeah, the cause isn't establishable. So if you want there to you establish go. the cause of entropy, be my guest. But describing things that occur always, perfectly acceptable. But does... Is there a always in nature downward vector, Nathan? Well, unless it's a helium balloon, but yeah, I would. Yeah. So that would right. be a things go so, up or down. So that's a no then to the downward vector. So automatically you're on our side then. No mandatory downward vector. Yeah, gas moves in all directions. No. Then why do you want vector. this debate then? You already know the outcome. There is no mandatory downward gravity. I want the debate, Nathan. Yeah, because you've won, but I'm asking Nathan yeah, 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 why he wants talking. the debate, yeah. given he's obviously well, already of the opinion that there's no downward vector. Yeah, but to be fair, he doesn't champion it. So why do you want the debate, Nathan? Why are you pushing this? I'm intrigued. No, it's not that I want the debate or anything. I, I just, it's not like... That. I spoke with Bob last Sorry, night. I talked again. to Anthony a couple weeks Sorry. ago. I, I know, oh, but he's given the reason. Uh, guys, he's can you stop rumpusing him? I want to hear his motivations. We can't divine them. He can only tell us. Go ahead, Nathan. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, no. It, some people are of the opinion, oh, no, there's this division. Makes us look bad. No, it makes us look good because Flat Earth is not a cult, okay? What you have with the Globers is Brenda says, every atom is a clock and all the Globers go, yeah, that's brilliant. Or a shoe is a naturally occurring phenomenon and all the Globers go, yeah, that's brilliant. I just encourage a discussion because I say this all the time, look around. If everyone agrees with you, you're probably in a cult. So I just wanna see the discussion. I think it'd be good. I don't even care if it's with Bob. I think Austin would do a good job representing the argument too. But I fully agree with you. He would. Yeah. He would. If, but the problem is, the opinion, when we get to the crescendo of the point, because I know that I'm going to win, right? I know that I'm going to win because scientific method tells me that if it's outside of scientific method, it's pseudoscience. When we get to that point, and which it has to concede or accept the point that I make, which is, well, that's outside of scientific method, right? Therefore, pseudoscience. That means that Bob's never going to take any responsibility for wits it not, not winning that point. But he is responsible for it. So what's the point in arguing by proxy? Yeah. Anthony, we just spoke three minutes ago about how natural laws don't follow the scientific method. Our natural so laws pseudoscience. So what? They're just descriptions. I covered this already, Nathan. So we yeah, don't that's have... also a false equivalent. It is false equivalence. So 
we don't have the cause of entropy. Okay, mm-hmm. so what? Yeah, well, we do know how to. I manipulate guess anyone it. could say the cause of egg going up is Anthony. What? But we didn't. No, he, he added, you know, he no, added you mass. Don't. That wasn't the cause. He added mass. Uh, still, the same question applies. A natural law, Nathan, is something that is merely a description of something that occurs always. So now, either you can say, well, on their side of this argument, this is flat Earth on flat Earth gravity argument, they say there is an always occurring downward vector. Would you agree, Nathan? Sorry, I just got a text from Austin, Nathan. Uh, Not always. (laughs) Just let me repeat my question then so you actually hear it. No. Not, not a downward vector. So, so, so you already know which side of this argument's going to win, then. But, but Nathan, you you understand that that's the whole thing with with Bob is that he thinks there is a downward force causing acceleration. Downward. Yeah. Well, when you pick something up and drop it, it goes down. That, like that is like a helium balloon. What, what about a helium balloon? A helium Come balloon on, does that, okay. does it? <laughs> How many how many times have you picked up a helium balloon? Many. I've got kids. Oh. Do you want me to go and get one? Uh, yeah, me, well, hold on. Oh, hold so on. Oh, hello. G plus panel. Yeah, I've got one. I could go and get one now. Would you like me to do that and let it go down? Go boom, uh, boom. You're, you're going to find a helium balloon on the floor, pick it up, and then let it go. Oh, when so I pick it up, I have to pick it down. Da- uh, hold on. Guys in G plus, for the love of God. I don't have to pick it up. I actually have to pick it down. Because it's stuck to the ceiling, Nathan. Yeah. It's, it's so not the down then. Not a universal yeah. down then, Nathan. Oh, oh, not so, okay. Nathan. I'm getting to my point. Not a law of nature then. Not like hot always goes to cold. Not a law of nature. Not always occurring. Not universally down then. Yeah. Well, helium balloon's not a solid. Yeah, so what? Filled with gas. Yeah, if it was, it would be no, going no, down no, as no, opposed no. to the light. G plus, please. Please. Nathan, my egg was solid. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> didn't, didn't go down, right? Well, it went still, down at first. I would still ask uh, here. Uh, well, uh, uh, what, was the egg on the ceiling? Are comfortable saying that... No. Um, uh, Do, does air get less I dense? Get, hold on, what's happening, oh, Elijah? Hold on, hold on, Elijah, hold what's happening is Nathan's now rumpusing because of cognitive dissonance. So, to be a natural law by false analogy, right? You're saying, well, natural laws don't go through the scientific method. No, they're just descriptions of things that occur always. Is down always, Nathan? Or just always except when it's not always, therefore not law of nature yeah. by false equivalent you used? I'm rumpusing the show, Nathan. Uh, that's a distraction technique that rumpus would also use. Yes, you are. But, but deflection in this instance, deflecting away from my question. You juxtapose natural law not going through scientific method, now you're rumpusing me, with the assertion that their side of the argument with a downward vector is valid and worth arguing over. I got you to the stage where we are establishing that it is definitely not a law of nature, that we always have a downward vector. Now you're asking me whether or not you're rumpusing. No, you're deflecting. So definitely not a law of nature as juxtaposed by you then, Nathan Thompson. Okay, so when you pick up solid objects that were on the floor and release them, they don't always go down, Nathan? What, when I take them out of equilibrium will they return from whence they came yeah equally if i pull a balloon off the ceiling it will go up so not universally down nathan you still yet to concede this point just just relax nathan or, okay. what, when i'm dealing with okay, somebody so- that doesn't want to concede that they are incorrect that we do not have a law of nature comparison here it's not always down nathan you just we, yet to we concede that into the crux of the argument nathan that is so the argument the argument is is there a universal that? down nathan that's the argument very simple. No, there isn't. With solids. With solids? So not universal then? So not rumpus. universal then, Nathan. Are you dumb? Are you rumpusing? Oh, now we're going to... Are you dumb? Not universal then? Only applicable to solids? So 
absolutely unequivocally not universal then. Not a law of nature. Not universally down. How simplistic do you want me to put it? The argument is, is there a universal down? The answer is no. Triggered. But not I'm, even um, then, because you can drop triggered. a solid uh, from the bottom <laughs> of a pool and it'll go up too. So, Well, just to clarify, it's like the elastic velocity or elastic energy of gas is way, 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 way stronger than electrostatics. It's just my point here, at least I can only speak for me, right? My point is the electrostatics is always at play uh, because everything that has any matter is electrostatic and the earth is also electrostatic and actually negative. And that's why we have lightning, et cetera, et cetera. So you can't just say it's not part of the equation. That would be dishonest. But at the same time, almost impossible to validate you don't you can't get outside Sorry, of here, what so. is this why are you on about why is this electrostatic non sequitur the fact that we have to constantly look at this stuff to experience it or describe it or have pens to write it down is totally non sequitur well you know it's just that well the earth's negatively charged and anything that falls to the earth is electrostatic well, like a balloon yeah the yeah, balloon less does that fall to the ground wits it no, of course. Well, then shut up, you dumb fuck. Doesn't mean there's not a natural bias, though. A bias? What for the balloon? How many times do you want to do this? Are you all morons? Add <laughs> uh, <Adam. laughs> Sorry, are you a moron? Is the balloon going down, Witsit? Yes, we are. Is the balloon uh, biased downwards? <laughs> Is it, are you serious, bro? That's how you're gonna shut run up, Nathan. Today? I'm talking to Witsit. Well, this is, well, what I'm saying is, you, you see, the bias is so incredibly weak that the... So it's not a bias down! What bias? The downward one the balloon's not experiencing. Third time wits it. Yeah, they're right. The gas isn't going to go down. Gas. So there is not a downward bias! <laughs> well, you would... No, not well! There's no downward bias, you clown! You've just admitted it. Why are you in cognitive dissonance over this, Witsit? Your hand wave dismissing the electrostatics, dude. Uh, what, well, the non sequitur fallacy? You introduced that I immediately demolished as a non sequitur fallacy? Wait, how's it non sequitur? I thought that was the so whole So the argument. balloon goes <laughs> down. <laughs> Sorry, the electrostatics make the balloon go down, or is this non sequitur? The electrostatics are way weaker, right? Are they making the balloon go down? Are you deaf? No, the the So non sequitur then! Nathan, you're going to give yourself an answer. Nathan, shut up. I'm not going to ask you again. I'm going to absolutely <laughs> teabag Witsit for his dumb fuckery. So this electrostatic is not giving the balloon a downward bias, is it? Uh, no. No! That's right, Witsit, you clown! So what are you babbling about? Because once again, the uh, you, you just whistle past this. You just stutter for me like the rest of the fundies with their belief in gravity. There is not a downward bias, clown. Okay, but yeah. Okay, now enjoy the taste of my nuts, you flat earth fundy. There's no downward bias. Dismiss your hand. Dismiss what? The electrostatics that make the balloon go down? You're going to do it third time in a row, you circle-jerking fundy? Claimed it made it go down. It doesn't go down, you idiot. Are you thick? One claimed it did. That's a strong... Oh, right. I'm claiming a downward bias of the balloon and no one's claiming it. You are. You're stuttering, double-speaking, cognitive dissonance-laden fundy. If matters inherent... Every compilation of matter is inherently electrostatic. This and that's got anything to do with a balloon going down? Fourth time circle jerking this shit in a row? I never said the balloon went down. It doesn't go down! Are you dumb? It does, dude. Oh, it does? Oh, balloons go down, go boom, boom with a single vector of downward, do they? Uh... No, the balloon- No, that's right, you unbelievable buffoon. They do not have a bias down, regardless of your non sequitur shite about electrostatic non-forces. Hello, not going down, not biased down. Are you getting this? 
I'm getting your whistling past my argument. You're not even addressing it. You're pretending. What, the non sequitur of electrostatic forces that you assert that have an influence on the downward bias we don't see in the balloon? Non sequitur, you clown. Equilibrium that sat is inherently electrostatic. This is objective. Oh, and the equilibrium for the balloon is down, like your bias. No, 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 it's not. No, 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 no. That's the taste of my nuts. Are you dumb? No, 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 not downward bias, mate. Anthony, I suggest... Okay, this is the I, thing, I man. How fast gas really moves is stronger than electrostatics, but it's not gone. It isn't effectively not there. You're just... Oh, so there's a bias. So gases don't expand equally in all directions, then. You're an entropy denier. No, no, no. Entropy's way stronger than electrostatics. Sorry, you said there's a bias. So do we have more gas going down than going up, or is it equally expanding in all directions, entropy denier? Yeah, gas isn't affected. Its directionality isn't... Sorry, isn't affected. So not the bias. Not affected. So no bias. You utter fool. Unaffected means there isn't a bias, idiot. Can we just have a conversation? Well, it would technically Nathan, be I'm going to remove you. You're white knighting for the fundies so... who believe in gravity on the flat earth side. Now you can shut up. Time. Everyone in G plus can do the same. I will teabag Witsit the Clown, who seems to have just denied that there is any effect on grass. Uh, uh, grass? On gas. So no bias then, Witsit. Well, you're straw manning again. I never. Uh, not a straw man. So you've just declared quite openly and boldly there is no bias in gas. This is why y'all wouldn't debate me, because y'all can't argue- uh, Sorry, that would be a rumpus technique, so deflection. So there is no bias then? You've just disclaimed that, you fool! No, you're not even addressing my argument, Nathan. Your argument is that there's an overriding electrostatic force that means it doesn't, quote, all go away. That would imply that there is also a bias in gas that expands equally in all directions. I asked you if it expands equally in all directions. You confirmed there is no effect on it. Therefore, no bias. Not a straw man clown show. Okay, let me give you an example. If I have a bias in a race because I have five feet on the person... What about a gas? You deflecting little fundy shit. What about a gas, moron? That's my example. Okay, well, if you're not understanding the analogy, I don't know... The analogy isn't an analogy when my example is with gas and you're now using men running. That's idiotic, childish, non-sequitur, false comparison. You want to call me out for a straw man I haven't used? I'll berate you for your non-sequitur nonsense. No, I won't compare gas that expands without any bias downwards to a man running, you idiotic child. Yeah, well, what I was explaining is just because there's a bias doesn't mean it won't get... What bias? Tell me about the bias in the gas, clown. Collision rate of the gas. Tell bias. me about the bias down in the gas. Is the gas electrostatic? Has it got a bias downwards? Well, yes, a natural... Oh, yes. So gas is pooling, then. We've got gas moving more down than up, then. You are an entropy denier, it's it. Oh, you're shit. Dude, do you not? Uh, this is why I. You're an entropy denier, you utter clown, stuttering moron. So you think gas has got an extra downward vector when it expands in all directions, you entropy denier clown? I never said that, Nathan. I oh, you just told us it had got a downward bias, you utter moron. Now you're lying about what you claim. What I'm saying is... Is that it's got a downward bias and it hasn't. I know what you're saying when I point it out you claim straw men. No, mate. You're getting annihilated because you believe in a downward bias that doesn't exist. Oh, electrostatics exist. Oh, really? So they're making gas go down by boom, boom, like bouncy balls, mate. Can you offer one example of matter that isn't electrostatic, dude? And can you example how electrostatics making the gas go down, go boom, boom, which is your argument about a downward bias? I'm not claiming that gas is going down, boom, boom. Well, they're not. So there's no downward bias. So your argument fails, you utter clown. There is no downward bias. Violated by gas. 
no, yeah, gas is where she... Yeah, no, yeah, no. Sounds like cognitive dissonance to me, mate. Okay, well, I... Alright, I don't even... I don't know why I came on. Yeah, I know you don't know. You don't even know where you are. You're getting annihilated by someone on your own side because of your abject stupidity and belief in a downward bias. That's where you are. That's what's happening. There is no downward bias. You've admitted it yourself. Gas expands equally in all directions. There's no bias. But yet you tell us it doesn't all go away. That's simultaneously holding two points of view at the same time. A.K.A. Cognitive Dissonance. You unbelievable clown. Mm, okay, I bet you can't answer this question though. Well, so maybe change the subject. So the gas isn't got a downward vector, and you want to ask me a new question like a fundy trying to obfuscate from their annihilation? Yeah, what a typical play. No, mate, no downward bias. I'd like a concession from you. Let's see how much humility you've got. No, I, I don't have a dude. I never said gas went down, so I don't have. Oh, so it doesn't have a downward vector bias then? So you're conceding your point that Bob's trained you with? I'm conceding that everything. I knew this before, Bob, dude. Everything that falls to the ground is inco. Uh, like gas. Everything that falls to the ground, like gas. You are to moron, circle jerking, fundy, five times. That's why you'll cut me off again, Nathan. You can't answer this question. If there's a downward bias, could something... Uh, bias for gas? Is there a downward bias for gas? Or are you just going to ask me something that assumes one? See. If there's a downward vector, it's your begging the question fallacy. Don't you get it, moron? No. Nope. Uh, if there's a downward vector, it's your assumption of the outcome you're trying to prove. That's called begging the question. You're useless. And lightning goes to the ground. So you're just going to talk through me, you fundy asshole. If there is a downward bias, is your assertion of the thing you're trying to prove. Okay, but I'm not... Not okay! A logical fallacy, child. Okay, you just think... Get... Not okay, child! A logical fallacy. You are assuming the thing you're trying to prove. When you say, if there's a downward force, there isn't. Because gas doesn't have one, does it? Assuming anything. Oh, you're assuming gas go down, go boom, boom, my friend. Is he hurt? Electrostatic? Uh, sorry. Electrostatic non sequiturs making gas go down, go boom, boom now, is it? You keep saying non sequitur, but you're... Uh, so gas is going down, go boom, boom, or is this non sequitur? Sequitur, dude. Yeah, it's non sequitur if gas is not going down, go boom, boom. Is gas going down, go boom, boom? No one claims that gas goes down, go boom, boom. You do. You claim there's a bias downwards, you stupid shit. That's your claim you're here to defend, you unbelievable moron. So like Tim Osman telling us no one claims the horizon's earth curve, you're telling us no one claims there's a downward vector. Yeah, welcome to our side of the argument, you utter idiot. No, no one claims it, right? So Bob doesn't claim it then. And then you add salt So to Bob it, doesn't claim the it then. Yo, wits it. You're getting teabagged. So no one claims a downward vector then. All right, just let the record show and reflect. That no one claims a downward vector, as declared by Witsit, gets it, even though he's been indoctrinated to believe that there is a downward vector, that he assumes when he says, if there's a downward vector. I was just making a point you're being dishonest. You have a very... Oh, right, now it's called me a liar, you scumbag shithead. How dare you? How dare you call me a liar? No. You've conceded there's no downward vector to gas, but your argument here is that there's an exclusively downward vector. You utter moron, you've even annihilated your own argument by saying that nobody's claiming it. Oh, run away. Legged it. Good. That was the absolute annihilation of wits it gets it with his unbelievable horseshit nonsense that we've got an exclusively downward vector at the end of his argument he declared nobody's claiming that very tim osman-esque considering that's the very point he's here to defend and that's the reason why there's no conversation unless it's with Bob, because now Bob will just go, ah, wits it got battered. He can just distance himself from that and carry on preaching that there's a downward vector and there isn't. And he claimed that lightning only comes down, but lightning has, I mean, has gone from the ground up too. Yeah, lightning goes both ways. Uh, as exactly. does gas. No exclusivity to downwards with gas. He even admits it. Whilst saying, 
Well, the down bit doesn't just go away. What about with gas? Well, it's unaffected. So it just goes away then. Is in cognitive dissonance holding two positions simultaneously? The downward vector, I assume, if I'm begging the question fallacy, doesn't just go away. What about gas? Well, it's not affected. So it goes away then. Not exclusively down. Not a law of nature. How dare you call me a liar, Witsy? I lost all respect for you here. You stupid child. My descriptions weren't ad homs, they were factually accurate. How dare you call me a liar when I annihilate your fundy belief? You know better than the ballers, Witsit. I've lost all respect for you. Highly uncomfortable delivery, but I can't say you weren't accurate. If you come you here with fundy belief, I don't care if you're wearing a flat earth hat, I will destroy you. Yeah, come here with your belief in a downward vector and expect it to be raped by me for an audience. Your belief got annihilated here. If you don't like it, Witsit, you can call me a liar at the end like a scumbag fundy does. All it'll do is demolish all respect anybody in this corner of the internet had for you. Because you didn't win, you came and punted your belief. And at one stage, you even demanded I beg the question with you. If there's a downward vector, you pathetic fallacy using moron. That's a fact, not an ad hom, based on your performance here. Yet you call me a liar just, at the end. What an absolute disgusting outrage. No better than a baller. I, just before you round it out, my offer is still there to Bob and only Bob. I'm quite happy to do this, Bob. I am not hiding from you, but you do hide behind your minions. So let's do it, Bob. Let me know when you can do it through John at Quantum Eraser Show. And with that, I'll say, if you're watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering Streams, then stay tuned, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on either Premiering Stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. So entropy is dependent upon electrostatics. Well, everything that happens is inherently electrostatic, and so it's intellectually dishonest to just pretend it's not there. Are everything you claiming everything. electrostatics causes entropy? Uh, no, everything, uh, everything, including your assumption of a downward a vector. Claim about a natural law, dude. Just, sorry, every Who's it causes. Okay, guys, guys, is guys, guys. electrostatics the cause of everything? What I'm saying is, if everything is electrostatic, that means whatever it does is also inherently electrostatic. If something accelerates to the ground, which the Earth is electrostatic, and the object falls to the ground and it's electrostatic, objectively, that's electrostatic acceleration. Nathan oh, then yes. lets go of a balloon and annihilates the argument completely because the balloon doesn't fall to the ground. Therefore, the inherent assumption of a downward vector doesn't exist because not everything falls to the ground. The assumption being everything falls to the ground. Everything doesn't fall to the ground. There isn't an exclusive downward vector. I can annihilate that by letting go of a balloon. I don't claim an exclusive downward vector. Man. Excellent. Well, there is an exclusive downward vector being claimed by that side. It's claimed there's a now in 0.8 meters per second downward vector according to bobby recently asked if he climbed up a ladder why it isn't the case he wouldn't go up if he jumped off it now he asserts that the reason is because there's a downward vector wits it didn't you know that or are you now saying nobody claims that okay well i've just tried that's why i probably shouldn't have just jumped in in the middle of the conversation me and bob don't agree on exactly how he words it bro like this words is what? a this is a more in-depth type of conversation. Well, okay, I lay just, out your claim then. Not, Words I don't what? like when I feel like it's being okay, misrepresented. I don't care. I don't care about your discussion with Bob. What? Way? How do you word it? Phrase it however you like. Make your claim.
Okay, yeah, so when something falls down, it's electrostatic acceleration. Technically, it would be incoherent dielectric acceleration because the Earth is electrostatic. Okay. So whenever we drop the object... So, okay, I don't need an example. Thank you. Whatever. Concise, doing, consistency. It's, 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 hello, hello. Can you repeat the first section again without a long-winded explanation following? Yeah, it's technically called incoherent dielectric acceleration. Or just simply electrostatic acceleration when something and falls. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's all when, my claim is. Correct me if I'm wrong. In your description, when things fall to the ground, it's as a consequence of this incoherent dielectric magnetism, correct? Yes, and other things, of course, like the density okay, of the Okay, thank object, you. I just density. needed a yes. The... We just need your claim and a clarity, not an endless verbal diarrhea afterwards. Thank you, yeah, Witsit. Okay. Thank you. So, when things fall to the ground is an assumption, a.k.a. begging the question fallacy, that things fall to the ground. Right. So, like, gas would be one of the things that don't do that. So gas would be one of the things that pisses in the face of this assumption you're making that things go down and are therefore attributable to incoherent dielectric magnetism. That's correct. Your premise is flawed. Things don't just go down. Well, actually, there's it. just a net. I know, but I'm not saying, but dude, there's just, I'm not saying things just go down. They don't, Witsit. I know you're not just saying it, but anybody with half a brain knows that that doesn't happen. But you start your statement with when things go down, don't you? All okay, things go enough, down. Balloons go down. Put them in a vacuum chamber. They go down because of gravity. You are more about, okay, okay, okay. We don't no have vacuum. I'll have we don't have vacuums. Oh, in sorry, Witsit. Nature, thank, thank you. Witsit. Thank you. Witsit. 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 Thank you very much. Witsit. Thank you. Gravity. So the way you do science is you eliminate the confounding variables. You isolate them, and then you identify that gas does go down, just like everything else, just like you do with exactly the same speed Rumpus in a vacuum. Buoyancy okay. confuses the issue, flatters Can I please let Rumpus finish? More than one Hello? At a time. And with buoyancy, there's an upward vector. So you've got two things to think about. It's one too many things uh, for a flatty to consider. Up. Yeah, you're a moron. R you can't understand two things. I Whoever's talking, them. can you let Wh Rumpus finish so I can then respond to him when his verbal diary ends? Go ahead, Wh uh, Rumpus. Okay, so this okay. is the thing. Are Flatters can never cope with two forces acting at the same time. On a gas balloon, there's a buoyancy force and there's a gravity force. You can eliminate the buoyancy force so by moving the balloon into a vacuum chamber, and it goes down just as quickly as everything else. Okay, thank Sorted, you. Finished. Okay, thank you, Rumpus. Can may I reply? I've let you repeat it and summarise it. Go ahead. Thank you. So you assert that if you put a gas-filled balloon in a vacuum chamber, it will go down... What about if you didn't have the solid balloon around the gas? If you put helium without the solid, just the helium into a vacuum, would it go down, go boom, boom, like bouncy balls poured into a fashion tank as asserted by moron Thunderfoot Clown? Correct. Boom. So you think that if I release gas into a vacuum chamber, we'll have a puddle of gas on the bottom of the vacuum chamber? You're a moron. You're unbelievably stupid, Rumpus. Wow, you think that gas won't expand equally into all of the vacuum? Well, you're very stupid, Rumpus. Gas expands in all directions. While a helium-filled balloon might go down, go boom, boom, the gas expands in all directions to fill the availability of the vacuum chamber. You're stupid, Rumpus. Like, on another I, level, I'd thick. A, I'd have Santa but you're going to get an answer. You're going to get an answer. All little gas Holy shit, molecules. Rumpus. He let you he, finish, Rumpus. He, 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 he did finish. He finish, he finish. Rumpus. Yeah, what happened then was, while I was explaining just how stupid Rumpus was, he talked through every word because I annihilated his argument. His argument being that helium will pool in a vacuum chamber? That's the most stupid thing he's ever said here. I mean, that's really thick. So he's going to have to talk through it. Unfortunately, all he's doing is preventing Discord from hearing me, the flat earther, point out that if you release helium into a vacuum chamber, it will expand in all directions. It won't pool on the bottom of the chamber. That's just Rumpus, a globe-believing moron, and his abject stupidity on show for my audience. That's all that is. Without Rumpus interrupting constantly me pointing out that helium won't pool in a vacuum chamber, that's beyond absurd. Because he knows I can demolish every... You see, he's just talking through me claiming ad homs, not listening. Helium doesn't pool in a vacuum chamber. Let's see how many times I have to say it to the fundy-believing zealot. 
for him to concede that he's just wrong. Helium doesn't pull in a vacuum chamber, Rumpus, you're wrong. Balloons go down in a... Somebody's muted correct. him. So Witted is completely correct. Things fall down always, whether they're balloons okay, or not. Okay, shut up, I dude. Don't bring the name up. up. I don't believe that nonsense you talked. just said. I Rumpus, you have an answer. I so haven't been able it. to give an Shut answer up. yet. Shut so up, he it. asked, what happens to these helium molecule, helium atoms when they're released from a balloon? And yes, they do fall to the ground, but then they hit the ground and they bounce up again, just like bouncy balls. And he also dodged the point that the helium balloon falls in the first place because he doesn't <laughs> want to accept there are two forces acting on a helium balloon in the air, one of buoyancy and one of gravity. He can't cope with the fact there are two okay, forces. No worries. Like when you finish, don't tell me what I can't cope with. Am I allowed to respond? I've let you speak. I finished. I finished. I finished. Excellent. Let's see how long before you interrupt everywhere, do I say? Okay. Okay, you, so, Ron, you give me enough time Immediately, to that's the answer. <laughs> 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 okay, so you say that the gas from the helium balloon when it's popped will go down and then bounce up. So is the pressure on the walls of the chamber equal on all of the walls or is there more pressure on the bottom of the chamber of the helium going down, go boom, boom, like bouncy balls as Thunderfoot asserted when poured into a fish tank? Is the pressure equal in all directions in the helium or not? There is a very slight increase in pressure towards the bottom of any vacuum chamber with a gas in it due to the gas. So you're saying that gas has a bias downwards? Yes, exactly. As the balloon falls down, just like that. Yeah. No, no, not like the balloon. We're just talking about the gas. Just like the balloon. Just like yeah, the gas on its own like without the, the balloon. The... Oh, it seems he's being very slippery. He's now introducing the balloon again. No, no, no. Correct me if I'm wrong, Adam. The expansion of gases into a vacuum, free expansion as described by the second law of thermodynamics, would put equal pressure on the walls of the container. Am I incorrect? Exactly, yeah. yeah. You introduce you... that in, it will just carry on and exhibit gas behaviour it would, which would be straight linear motion until a collision occurs and then rebound off. In this case, if you've Adam is a one, moron just like you. Just oh, that's an ad hom interruption. Let's try again, Adam. He had to interrupt you by calling you a moron yeah. while you made sure the audience understood how wrong he was based on natural law descriptions. Feel free to repeat it, Adam. You're left with, obviously, the, the two options, the, the continuation of the gas continuing to exhibit gas behaviour as described in physics or the idea that eventually it runs out of steam and sits at the bottom of the tank. the bottom of the tank it has a slight preference there is a very slight increase in pressure at the bottom of a helium container than there is at the top and if you understood about gravity and the density of helium you would understand but given the fact you don't understand anything about math that's just nad hom adding on to his uh, baseless assertion generalization so have you got they've any got demonstrations Nathan, sorry apparently they've got a pre like, like these non-thinking molecules have preferences there is a slight increase in pressure at the bottom of a helium. And you still haven't answered the fact that helium balloons and at the same speed and acceleration as any other object in a vacuum chamber. So therefore, there is only when you isolate the variables, as you should do if you're doing science, not having confounding variables with buoyancy and gravity acting at the same time, you get... Okay, yeah, but so you're incorrect about that, Rumpus. The well, reason that the Rumpus, helium... you... You're saying a balloon will fall, a helium balloon falls down in a vacuum? Yeah, that's not true. There's a good balloon. I can, I can. There's a good. No, no, no. no. Oh, can you demonstrate that? Because no, I can guy. demonstrate it dude, expanding dude, in all directions dude, and hello, blowing dude, up in a vacuum. Dude, try and keep up. Right, a balloon will, but the gas won't. So, just yes, it will. Simmer down. He's saying a helium balloon. A, yes, a balloon that's right. With helium, so yes, that's with right. Gas. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, and he's correct. A helium balloon with its solid nature, may fall down in a helium-expired tank. I There's no helium in the tank. There's helium in the balloon. The balloon itself is solid. But the gas will expand equally in all directions in the tank. He's saying, no, it's got a downward so bias. So balloons do fall down then, Nathan. So balloons... So balloons <laughs> fall down, but the gas, helium, expands equally in all directions. Did you hear that, Witt? Uh, what did you stop saying my you? name, dude? You, dude, I don't agree with your nonsense, bullshit side of the argument. Are you crazy, person? Gas disperses omnidirectional in any and all directions. Okay, it has omnit or uh, has infinite vectors. It's instantaneously going to seek equilibrium. This is objective. This is a natural law. My argument has nothing to do with the nonsense that you say. My point is no, that everything's inherently electrostatic. 
And so it's just something we need to figure out more about. Well, I don't even claim that we can scientifically 100% validate it. You make up pseudoscientific you're bullshit and claim you're that you do wrong. know I mean, for a fact. So don't wrong. stop saying my name. Just stop saying my name. Stuff about lectures. You can uh, firstly, there's no shit. such thing as a natural law. Secondly, you just made up that stuff about electrostatics. You know nothing about this subject. You're just making stuff up just like Nathan. You've no idea what you're talking about. I suspect you don't even know the electrostatic attraction between two charged objects. I suspect you can't do any of the physics. I know it's 10 to the 39th power stronger than your fairy tale of gravity on the smallest scale. I know that you don't know in any way what you're talking about. Tell me the basic electrostatic law. Tell me the basic electrostatic law then. Please tell me what that is. It's just the it's the version that ended up getting copied with the knockoffs. You could come up with the fairy tale known as gravity. Tell me what the basic electrostatic. None of this matters. Stop. The point I jumped in is because you keep saying my name. Listen, listen, listen. Stop interrupting. Act like an adult. Electrostatic law is. Yeah, you're dodging the question. You claim wow. that you have this idea that everything's electrostatic, yet you don't even know the first thing about the physics of electrostatics, do you? Not the yeah, first thing. Yeah, I know more thing. than you do. You know, but you know. Hey, hey, here's the point. You're strawmanning my argument, acting like I agree with you because you're arguing with Nathan like a five year old about such a stupid thing. Right. I think Nathan misinterpreted me earlier, thinking I was basically saying something like you were saying. What you're saying is stupid. OK, so just please chill. Gas goes in any and all directions. I'm not claiming in any way that gravity's pulling gas down. All I'm saying is that there is an electrostatic resonance on the Earth and everything's electrostatic and it's super, super, super incredibly weak. But it's 10 to the 39th power stronger. They even claim about the bullshit no, gravity on the smallest no, scale. It, That's my point. It. It's a conversation that we're having with people that aren't stupid. Additional to what we found out. We're not listening to pseudoscientific bullshit fairy tales where you don't have any evidence at all. I can demonstrate electrostatics. You have nothing. You're just making stuff up. You can't oh, demonstrate electrostatics. You just made that up and you've no idea what to you, you do not know the first law of electrostatics. Tell me the basic law of electrostatics. Come on. Demonstrate you know something. Well, why is it that when Witsit's arguing with Rumpus, he'll quite happily tolerate people sticking him on mute while I fight to keep him off mute? What's going on? Who's muting What's the Rumpus? question? Who's muting you? Yeah, not me. Someone's muting me, yes. Yeah, I know, and I'm fighting to stop them. Who's doing that? Oh, that that's me, because Discord can't hear when... I'm only muting him when the other person is speaking after he's finished his complete point. It's the only time I'm muting him. But if hey, you'd just, like me to stop... Don't. The rumpus effect. Don't. Just don't. Right, so, so he's making stuff up, and he doesn't understand any of the laws or the physics he's talking about. This should... Give you a <sighs> clue as to the validity of his argument. He knows nothing about electrostatics. Yeah, Coulomb's law is the electrostatic laws. attraction equation. It was hijacked by this fairy tale known as gravity. Shut up, Tell dude. I'm talking now. Dude, Tell you're like a five law. year old. Answer my question. Tell me the basic law of electrostatics. Demonstrate you know something about this subject. Demonstrate the actual law. That's what you want no, me to do. Demonstrate Dem the law. Demonstrate. Tell me what the law is. I'm not asking you to demonstrate anything, which you can't do, obviously, in front of a microphone. I'm just asking if you know what the basic electrostatic law is. Please tell me. No. Nope. There we go. So there we go, people. <laughs> this is just making stuff up. He's lecturing you about stuff that he, was, he just made up when he, in his bed, underneath his bed, probably, or at sleep. Thought, I'll think up this random idea for which he has no citations, no support whatsoever. It, and then he's telling you all about it. And then you're sort of bullshit. sucking it up. And you should tell this guy to go like away. That. What are you talking Present about, dude? I, dude, Present I'm just not playing evidence, your little game, he's just dude. just making stuff up. It's oh just my god, I can give you, I can give you your little priesthood right here, telling you you're an idiot from Boston you, University, yeah, explaining the, yeah, what I just said word for word. You're dodging the question again. You can't do it, can you? You can't provide a basic law of electrostatics. You know nothing how about this subject. You know less about it than I did when I was 11. <laughs> that like, you, you, you you're talking about the fact that, that light charges old. repel. There are people in short <laughs> talking, trousers who know more you're about You're talking the about you the do. fact that like repels you and, not, and yeah, change dude, the shut up. Yeah, so change the subject. You see, you again, how you're going off the subject. Dude, you're going what is wrong with this guy? I'm trying to get you to focus on the subject of electrostatics, and you don't want yeah, to talk Colum's about it. Colum's law. Colum's oh, law. Colum's you found, law. You I you said got that it fucking two well minutes done. ago, you no, idiot. You didn't. No, you didn't. Okay, what was Yes, this? I did. Okay, I said Colum's law okay. was hijacked okay. by people what? to claim gravity. Okay, You're Coulomb's an idiot. Law? Okay, what's Coulomb's law? I've already said it's that like repels and opposite attracts. I didn't think no, that we operated at elementary levels in here. 
The point is that everything's inherently electric. Law. All you can do. All right, I'm disengaging. I want to know You're the variable. You're a, variable You're a gamma. Law. Shut up. Describe, I want you to describe the Coulomb's law precisely. He did say. Good. It's time, time for Brian to engage ago. now. Come yeah, on, and I want okay, to yes. know what the variables are in Coulomb's law. All right. Uh, he said he wants to disengage Rumpus, but Brian had something to ask you. Okay. We should. Well, we demonstrate he's an idiot. Okay, Brian, go ahead. Hey, well, vacuum uh, remember you talking about the balloon, yeah, uh, the helium balloon going down in the vacuum. Now, most people would say it's because of the density of the material of the balloon that's pulling it down because it doesn't have the other more dense gases that normally surround the balloon and uh, help it to have some kind of buoyancy. Um, and I'm not speaking about buoyancy as in the equation, I'm just talking about buoyancy as in uh, colloquially. But the problem is, is that in that heli or sorry, in that vacuum chamber, there is no other gases. So because there's no other gases, the helium that's inside the balloon doesn't have a need to fight against the other gases. So it doesn't have a need to go up because it doesn't have any any denser gases to to deal with. Do you understand? Correct. And that's why the force of gravity is then allowed to do its thing and pull it downwards. Are you dealing with manipulate the gravity. helium? It's, it's not exactly gravity. It's insane it's all identity. the time. The medium is what makes it dependent. Hang on. Every, the direction that it guys, the hello, it is in. Brian, and so hello, whoever is the, whoever is that's talking, the guy. The of gravity. Now Rumpus is going to indefinitely interrupt. Did you not hear me say Brian? Dead Brian. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, well, it's it's, relative that's density is the reason that the balloon is going down. Because the density of the material the balloon is made of, uh, the helium itself, with, with, with the fact that, that there is no denser gases outside of that, and there's no gases that help support the density of the, of the material, it's pulling down the helium. But the helium itself only has a want just What's to fill the chamber. It, it doesn't have a want to go directly to, 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 to take it up. Hang on, the hang on, helium down. It doesn't have a want to take an upward vector. Because there's no denser gases for it to deal with. What so it, is the force pulling within the balloon? The and the Rumpus, balloon Rumpus, you seem to be. Hold on, Brian. It's more than Brian. 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 Yeah. Sorry, Rumpus, you, you seem to be interrupting him. I, I don't really understand what the, what your problem is. Well, he keeps he on talking about a... this thing going down without explaining what is causing this the balloon, the helium, to go down. There's he didn't a force say associated that. with that, and that force is called gravity. No, <laughs> what? I'm I'm trying to detail it, but you're not listening. What am I supposed to do? Try again. No, well, after, well, you're supposed to say yeah, what the well, force Nathan. is. That's... I'm after saying three times the reason that the helium balloon is going down. For a start, the reason it goes down, right, is because the density of the material the balloon is made of does not have the surrounding gases that it normally has, right, to help it to be buoyant so the helium can go up. But the helium itself has no reason to even want to go up because there's no gases that are denser than it outside of it. Down. That's why it doesn't have a want to go up. So if you bust that balloon open, why the helium is just fill up. The He's not letting him finish, is he? Hold on a second, Brian. Order. Hold on, Brian. You didn't get to make your conclusory point. So Rumpus decided that he was going to interject over the conclusion for the second time. I don't he really won't understand. answer my goddamn question. Your question about it going down when he's not describing it going down. He's describing the gas released from the solid that doesn't have anything supporting it in the surrounding air because there isn't any, expanding in all directions, but you're not letting him get to that conclusory point. You're stopping him at the point where it's got nothing to support the solid at the bottom of the vacuum chamber. That would be a solid balloon without any air around it. But when the gas inside the balloon's released, it expands in all directions. Now, Brian's not getting to make that conclusion, is he? You're talking through him. You've done it twice. He's talking about the balloon. Yeah, he was moving to... on to his conclusion about the gas inside the balloon, which is the example. You're just not letting him, are you, Rumpus? Because you're a fundy with a globe belief, and gas doesn't go down, go boom, boom, like bouncy balls in a fish tank. Get him. Okay, you ask him that question. No, yeah, okay. I, I, Rumpus, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to answer your question, but you keep coming in. Well, no, 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 Brian, Brian, fair enough. What force makes gas go down, go boom, boom, like bouncy balls poured into a fish tank? You need the question repeating, Brian. Oh, you're talking to me, Nathan? Yes, I'm asking you. I'm repeating no, no Rumpus's question. That, that it doesn't happen. Oh, it doesn't happen, Rumpus. Gas doesn't go down, go boom, boom. So he does. So he, so he just accepted that why... Stutter for us. So his answer, Rumpus, is your presupposition that gas go down, go boom, boom is incorrect. 
Are you going to address that or just reassert that it does go down, go boom, boom? Why does a balloon full of helium go... Balloon isn't a gas. So the point that Rumpus interrupted oh. twice was actually because he needs it to just be the example without the balloon being popped and the gas inside it and what it does to create the medium around the solid balloon. But he interrupted twice at the point that the example wasn't concluded so that he could focus only on this assertion that what the balloon does is the same as what the gas inside the balloon does. Now, the fact that the balloon is like or akin to the chamber itself, i.e. a barrier for the gas inside the balloon to expand in all directions. So maybe if Rumpus will and stop his fundamentalist religious zealotry interruption for a few seconds, down. he might, if he's not constantly interrupting, hear the question. We'll never know, though, because he's never listening. Well, okay, so the qu okay, the question is, why does... The question from me that you're not listening, you're interrupting because you interrupted him at the point that the balloon is going down without a medium around it. But... Inside the balloon itself, oh, I'm not going to get to ask. Yeah, we'll not going to get to ask. I'm not going to get to ask. Wow, what a coward. So Rumpus can't tolerate this question. It's back to that stage. Rumpus has been annihilated and no questions are allowed to be put to him anymore. I want him to answer the question. Uh, yeah, I, you're going to insist I, I, I on questions this, that you okay, ask, Rump, I know. Rumpus, I learned this, Nathan. Rumpus, why is it you claim the balloon is going down? Well, we know in, for an empirical fact that the helium balloon goes well, out. You're asking me, me why it Answer does. me. Why does the balloon so go I down? What is, you, what is your claim for why it goes down in the helium, in the Gra vacuum chamber? Gravity. Because just like you gravity. pull down okay. on your scale you the bar, clear, hang on one the second. Okay. Okay. Gravity. He doesn't need Can an example, pull? Rumpus. He hang just on. needs you to Sorry, assert Nathan. what we already know is your claim. Thank you. Gravity. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Thank you, Nathan. Okay, that's fine, Rumpus. Can you post the proven positive hypothesis? that prove gravity and the hypothesis test? Yeah, the Cavendish experiment does that. That's not an experiment. That's not, a, no, sorry, ne, no, <laughs> Rumpus, Rumpus. What was the basis of the Cavendish observation, not we the experiment? We need a definition, we need a definition. Hang on, it's, hang on. It's a super what was the point of uh, Brian, hold on. No, what's the Brian, name respond. Herb experiment. What's the independent and deep? What's the independent? it worked. Ga Hello, guys in Discord. Hello. And people, what was the, we do the, do the experiment. Yeah, that's what Rumpus is going to do. You interrupt so Rumpus never gets to hear a question put to him again. Thank you, whoever that was in Discord. Thank you very much. So what was the independent variable for the Cavendish experiment, please? The distance between the masses. Well, there are three variables in the Cavendish experiment. The two. Did you not hear me? Are you thick or deaf? I would like the independent variable, please. I'm giving you... The, there are three potential... Are you thick? Do you not understand English? Do you not know what the word independent means, you abject moron? Three potential independent... Not three potential. Give me the presumed, then validated cause. That would be independent. Not three ones you can pick... Not three. You're thick. You're thick. Thank Rumpus you. is a globe Thank believer, and therefore automatically <laughs> stupid. It's not three independent. You pick, you've got the option of one of three. So you then pick one and make that your so independent variable. If there's one of three, the Rumpus, that, that means that it was correlative they, they, and it didn't prove causation, the right? There's the distance between the masses. So that's the independent variable you pick. In oh, it's the distance. You think distance is a viable independent variable? How are you going to vary and manipulate this distance? You think distance causes gravity? You say you're just over-talking because you want to protect... You said the independent variable's distance. So you're saying independent variable cause of the effect is distance. So if distance, then gravity. Science. You're trying to prevent them from hearing about, a bit about science. In I've asked you what the independent variable was. You've told me it's distance. So I'm now confirming that you think if distance, then gravity. Are you stupid? You don't want to let me answer. You don't I'm asking you if you... I'm confirming what you've already told me. You've told me distance is the independent variable. I'm trying to tell you what the independent... No, you're talking through me saying you're trying to talk constantly so I can't be heard and my response isn't responded to. So you're not listening. That's what's happening, you coward. No, you've said the independent variable for Cavendish is distance. That's ludicrous. You don't understand what qualifies an independent variable as an independent variable. So you're a thicko. I'll tell you what the independent variable... Yeah, what you're saying is I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you. So you'd have to respond to what I'm saying. You're an abject coward, like every globe-believing fundy who comes here. He's absolutely determined that you won't hear what the independent variable is in the Cavendish experiment. Even though You've already told me it's distance. 
So here we go again. You see, you've told me it's distance, you stupid idiot. In the Cavendish family, three things you see, he will over the, the because he doesn't want you to know. He doesn't want you to know that it's an experiment. Right, the independent variable in the Cavendish family. If you design it the way you wish to use it, you move the masses to change the distance. So you change. So the thing you're varying then is distance. So according to you, the independent variable for the Cavendish experiment is distance. Yeah, that's what I was establishing, and you constantly talk through me. So while you're ignoring the fact that I'm pointing out that you think that if you vary distance, you will cause gravity, is an absolutely absurd notion. And what's the observed phenomena that's being caused in the Cavendish experiment? What's the dependent variable if the independent variable is distance? He doesn't understand what he's talking about. Now you just add homing me while I talk, so you don't have to respond to me. So this is a tactic that Globers who lose use. So they don't have to respond to a single word you say. They talk constantly and claim by projection that you're doing it to them. When anybody who's got anything has got an IQ of a root vegetable can see this. Now it's an ad hominem attack. That's another logical fallacy. So rather than addressing my argument, which he talked through constantly so he doesn't have to listen to, now he's calling me a moron. He's claimed that the independent variable is distance. If you move the two objects, moving the objects is the thing being varied. That's varying distance. So he's claiming you vary the distance. That's his independent variable. Now all I want to establish because I'm trying to establish cause and effect reasoning in the scientific method, that would be a hypothesis, what the dependent variable is. It's normally the first step, but we don't seem to have that. And he doesn't want to listen. Now, for anybody listening to this as an audience member, know the following. I'm asking him for scientific validity. He said he's got it. And all he's doing is obfuscating, distracting, and talking through every single clarity that I give to the things he's already stated. He said that the independent variable is distance. Now all he needs to know is the phenomena he thinks distance causes. Normally the first step of the method in science. But he won't give it us. He's just going to talk through us constantly. I absolutely guarantee he hasn't listened to my request. Ridiculously charges science denying... See, now it's a string of ad homs. I'm not science denying for my audience's benefit. I'm asking specifically for part of a hypothesis. Not denying science, asking a question. What's the dependent variable, please, Rumpus? And he's trying to suppress and say... What's the dependent variable, please, Rumpus? So, it, so do, I'm trying to tell you what... Stutter for me! He heard me that time, ladies and gentlemen. That's why he stuttered. He heard me asking what the independent variable was. I'm now going to repeat that through him non-stop. What's the dependent variable, Rumpus? Dependent Rumpus. variable most of the time is used. Here we go, you see, he's over talking me again. He doesn't want you to hear what the answer is. The quick, so the ind independent variable is usually the distance between them. I asked for the dependent variable. You've just repeated something that I've already got clarity on. So I'm going to interrupt and point out for my audience that is immediately obfuscated. I specifically asked for the dependent variable, not for a reiteration of the independent variable. I'll ask you again. What is the dependent variable in the Cavendish experiment? Please, Rumpus. He is about this subject. You should be worried about... What is the dependent variable in the Cavendish experiment? Please, Rumpus. He's thinking... Why is this guy preventing... What is the dependent variable in the Cavendish experiment, please, Rumpus? But this guy's determined that you don't... Hear what is the dependent variable in the Cavendish experiment, you science-denying fundy? It's the dependent variable, I'm man. I'm trying to tell you, but he won't he stop talking. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you what the dependent variable is, but he won't stop over-talking. So just Excellent. fucking say it, Rumpus. Uh, no swearing. What is the dependent variable in the Cavendish experiment, please, Rumpus? It's really suspicious that he won't let me finish a sentence. What is the dependent variable in the Cavendish experiment, please, Rumpus? He won't let me say it. He w what is the dependent variable in the Cavendish experiment, please, Rumpus? What the dependent variable is. The dependent variable is the force that the uh, measured by the deflection of the torsion beam. So, we so if distance, then deflection in torsion beam, so this has absolutely nothing to do with gravity, then? No, he's got over taught me again, because he... I will do precisely as I like, nice and calmly this time. Why bother getting wound up by this dick? So we've got our independent variable, that would be distance. You vary the distance of the balls. And he's done told us that that causes the dependent variable a variation in a torsion bar. So the dependent variable, according to Rumpus, is the variation in an, a torsion bar. That's not a natural phenomenon. 
And that's because he's a scientist. Ram is the only voice I've heard for the experiment. Please, can you shut up? Rams. Rams. You're making matters worse. Rams. Rams. He doesn't want you to hear the answer. Don't you just hear the answer? He just keeps saying the same thing over and over. All we can hear on Discord is you, Rump, and you. All we hear is you. Mute him. Mute him. Oh, mute him. Oh, mute him. Stop, stop. Man. I'm complaining about Rumpus. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't chill. Who else to cause chaos? Yeah. Come virus as well. You can shut up. Sorry, Rumpus. I can't do 10 seconds. I can't just do 5 seconds. To to the answer. I want to just give Anyone you 5 else? seconds worth of answer. So here we go. You've given me your answer. I'll summarise it again. Because you had a load of white knights cause a load of disturbance. So I'll summarise your point. You said if, that would be independent variable, variation in distance, then a variation in torsion bar what he was doing he would not be doing this the fact yeah so i'll try again for my audience's benefit i've gone through the scientific method i have to actually have to i've got somebody at my door ringing and ringing and ringing bear with me a second i don't stop him make, spouting his drivel i only get excited when i'm prevented so the answers are the independent variables the distance between the masses don't and the dependent it, variables don't answer it. See, i got interrupted again i got interrupted again and the dependent variable is the deflection of the torsion button you do realize what the fuck do we see hey, that in nature, on. you clown? Thank you, you Rob. Really shut up. Are you out of your mind? Wasn't trying to prove gravity. You know that, don't you? <laughs> With his observations. <laughs> Rumpus. Sorry, I'm just sitting here trying to prove the old and busted gravity anyway. He's using gravity as a means of measuring the depth. Can I just get Rumpus's attention for a second? So we established what your independent variable was. And your independent variable was the distance that you can vary between those two objects. We also established that your dependent Correct. variable would be the torsion bar. That would Direction. be a that would be a non naturally occurring phenomena. Now, science is the study of, of the occurring. and of course it's going to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, squirm for me. Science is exclusively interested in the physical and natural world. Step one in the scientific method is to observe natural phenomena. Torsion bar twist isn't a natural phenomena, therefore this isn't a scientific experiment, Rumpus. You're just incorrect. Is the force on your bathroom scales natural? Yeah, it's just talked through every word of that, ladies and gentlemen. Just for the audience's benefit, Rumpus didn't listen to the conclusion of the argument. The argument being that he's got science for gravity, and there's two issues. He's not going to listen to either. But I'll tell you, while the fundy constantly talks first issue is he's trying to prove with science that there is gravity and according to him he's actually validating the cause of torsion bar twist not gravity the second problem is that science deals with natural phenomena and torsion bar twist isn't natural phenomena now rumpus hasn't listened to the conclusion because that's where he dies and does his argument that cavendish is scientific validity for gravity it is not I mean, even he can't be believed in the argument he's just presenting. Well, he didn't listen to it. Let's see can if you can... Pull, Hold on. Pull out oh, a chocolate! Chocolate! Hello? Let's see if you can strongman my argument. Let's see if you can actually repeat my argument back to you. Me. Go ahead, Rumpus. Steel man my argument. Rumpus. You said you can't believe I made that argument. What argument? Detail back my argument to my audience, please. B, that because we've designed an experiment, therefore the force that we measure is invalid, which is absolutely idiotic, like saying, oh, we put a voltmeter across something. Oh. No, I don't need a comparison. I need you to steal man my argument and you failed. That's not my argument. My argument is that an experiment deals with the phenomena occurring in nature and the DV, also your phenomena, is torsion bar twist, not a natural phenomena. That was my argument. Yeah, but it's the same force that's exerted on bathroom scales. Is that not your dependent variable? Is torsion bar twist? That's not and a natural dependent phenomenon. Dependent variable on getting on bathroom scales is the spring. Sorry, it's the same as getting on a non-natural phenomena of a bathroom scale. Yeah, that's also not a natural phenomenon. Therefore, this is not an experiment. It's not establishing. Why, why are you talking stuff. through me? Why are you talking through me? Are you scared? Are you What's the problem? Instrument? What's the problem? Are you scared of this rebel? What's the problem? Does your globe belief feel challenged and threatened? Is that what you're talking Measure to me? Forces. Your basic the forces isn't in existence. You're measuring torsion bar twist. 
That's not some force in nature that you're giving me. That's not gravity. It's torsion bar twist. Instrumentation to measure something. That's now, why would he be doing this, audience? Why is he continually ignoring the rebuttal that demolishes his argument? Why do you think that is? It's because he doesn't have any further rebuttal. There isn't anything to go from here for his side of the argument. He doesn't have a naturally occurring phenomena and his independent variable is distance. <laughs> it's stupid. So he's not studying gravity. He's not offering science for gravity. He's establishing the cause of torsion bar twist and according to him, it's distance. Experiment. Uh, not an experiment. That's what I'm pulling apart if you were to listen. But rather than listen, because you might have to actually address things, I say, you're talking through me like a coward. All experimental science is trying to... It's not an experiment. You don't have a dependent variable that's valid. You don't have a natural phenomena. That people. Whenever you repeat his argument, you're repeating the fact that he doesn't want you ever to use an instrument to measure the forces or volts or amps or whatever. He's saying... Experiments establish the cause of effect, though, don't they? They don't measure. They establish cause. Whenever you repeat his argument. Let's see if he can establish this argument. Let's see how many times I have to repeat it. Do you understand the difference between measuring something and establishing cause with science? You always measure something and then you see if... The uh, sorry, do you understand the difference between measuring something and establishing cause with science? You use measuring to do the cause. Uh, do you understand the difference between measuring something and establishing cause with science? Use it. You measure... You measure... I don't care about measuring. I'm asking about scientific validity. This Cavendish experiment is supposed to be scientific validity for gravity. Now, it isn't because you don't have a naturally occurring phenomena and your justification is to say when you measure... Well, you're so clearly failing to understand the difference between maths and science, Rumpus. Measure things, Nathan. Yeah, measures maths, isn't it, dickhead? Yeah, but we can all so hear you, you know on here. You have to measure things. Excellent. Yeah, measures maths, though, and science establishes the cause. And clearly, because you don't know the difference between establishing cause with science no, you don't. and you measuring don't. something with maths. You, just, you, you don't understand about measuring cause because you... Uh, measuring cause? Complaining we're measuring... Measuring cause... We're measuring a force. We're measuring a force. Oh, measuring a force. That would be maths then, not science. We then measure the dependent variable. So you A dependent variable, dependent variable in this example, is not a natural phenomenon. It's torsion bar twist. It, so, so you're saying measuring things is not natural. Is that what you're Sorry, we're establishing the cause of natural phenomena with science. And I asked if you know the difference between measuring things, that's maths, and establishing the cause of a phenomena, that's science. You don't know the difference. That's the problem that Globers have got. They don't know what science is. He doesn't want you to measure the dependent variable, people. Measures maths. We're asking for scientific validity for gravity. You've offered up Cavendish. We don't want maths. We want science. You don't know the difference. It's very obvious now. You know you measure the deflection. Measures maths. How many times have I got to tell this complete idiot that measuring something isn't establishing the cause of a natural phenomena? Establishing the cause of a natural phenomena is science. And measuring things is maths. Sure. The dependent variable. You keep telling me about measuring things. You don't measure a dependent variable. You vary and manipulate it. Variable. Yeah, it's a variable. Yeah, you vary it. You don't measure it. You vary it. You stupid idiot. It just clues in the title. You stupid idiot. Ron, you don't understand the most basic elements of an experiment. You. Uh, yeah, the most basic experiment would be step one: observe natural phenomena. That's the first step in the scientific method. Measure the dependent variable. You now check. You now denying you have to measure the dependent variable. Is that what you? You measure the dependent variable if you cause the effect by varying the independent variable. So the only thing you measure is if it affects it or not, not how much. That's maths. But whether or not it causes it, that's science. You don't know the difference. You think measuring things is science, and it isn't. You're just stupid. The dependent variable by measuring the deflection of the torsion bar. So, th so torsion bar is the dependent variable, then. Being exerted. So and torsion bar is a dependent variable, according to you. You're thick. No, torsion bar isn't a valid dependent variable. Torsion bar is made by man. I know what caused that. A man made it. Natural phenomena, science is exclusively interested in the physical and natural world, and there are no torsion bars in nature. Man made them. That's why you don't put man made stuff through the scientific method. The cause of your torsion bar is a man making it, you idiot. Measuring it is just maths. Now flipped on some things, so I've got you on a barrel on both, haven't I, Nathan? You have got you in a corner. You, you haven't got me in anything, you stupid dick. You're just ignoring every word I say and then claiming victory when you don't listen to a single word that's responded to your claims with. You've claimed science for Cavendish. That would mean that you've got a dependent variable, natural phenomena, should be gravity. 
because that's what you're claiming you got science for. But you've said torsion bar twist. Well, that's a very unnatural man-made phenomenon you got there. And you're claiming the cause of torsion bar twist is distance. Well, nothing to do with gravity in your hypothesis. If distance, then torsion bar twist. So not gravity then. There's no more than a stick with on a wire, and you're now saying that's somehow magic. It's a measuring device, and you have... I'm not saying that. That's your claim. I'm saying it's magic, am I? Oh, right, I'm claiming Cavendish now. So this is called a burden of proof reversal fallacy. I don't understand now. Either. Now it's an ad hominem attack. I don't understand. So we just non-stop, one after the next, logical fallacy after logical fallacy. Burden of proof reversal fallacy followed by ad hom ultimately wrapped up in a deflection because he's got nothing to respond to this isn't an experiment let's make the conclusion cavendish doesn't have a naturally observed phenomena and the independent variable is absurd you can't have distance be the cause of anything it's absolutely ridiculous bear this in mind this is the guy who's leading you he now another ad hom leading you what an absolute joke rumpus is doesn't have a scientific validity to gravity so he's just got to ad hom me the constant time is here Thinking. Why am I listening to this guy who doesn't understand? Well, then get lost. Why are you listening to it? Because you need to defend your religious faith in gravity by asserting that Cavendish has scientific validity for it. You don't have any scientific validity to gravity. You don't have a dependent variable that's valid. You don't have an independent variable that's variable and manipulatable, real in the physical sense. You've got abstractions causing torsion bar twist. You ought to be ridiculing him. He's denying... Exp you should be ridiculing me, people. Rumpus should be addressing my arguments, but he's telling you that you should be ridiculing me because that's the last line of defence. Ridicule the flat earthers when they pull apart your arguments. You don't have any scientific validity for gravity. It's an absolute horseshit assertion. As for the gas go down, go boom, boom with gravity, gas expands in all directions. Thunderfoot's assertion that gas go down, go boom, boom, or Witsit's assertion that there's a downward bias in any shape or form is absolutely ludicrous when gas expands in all directions in equal vectors. So therefore, Rumpus and his nonsense assertion that he's got scientific validity to prove that gas go down, go boom, boom with gravity by saying Cavendish, if distance, then torsion bar twist, doesn't even mention gravity. He thinks that's scientific validity. It's just absurd. The fact that he can't listen to a word of it is just a demonstration of how badly they've lost here. Please. Anybody but Rumpus for a while? Yeah, but I'm no, no, me, I can talk to my audience indefinitely while Rumpus is here. I know that he thinks that he's going to get the mic the entire time he's here. All he's doing is avoiding answering anything that I say or addressing anything I say by talking through every single word of it. It's pathetic. Nathan, it is what worth talking you... to Rumpus to ask him if he admits that it's correlative. What does he think it proves? He said there were three a correlation, then you decide whether... Then you decide from the graphs you get. For instance, what you do is you get a graph of your dependent variable... Maths. Graphs and maths. Quantitative. <laughs> you, don't seem to <laughs> you don't know the difference between qualitative and quantitative. A graph would give you a quantitative measure, yeah? But it doesn't establish cause. Graphs. What, if distance, then torsion bar twist, let's put it on a graph? Well, who cares? Science would be establishing the cause of a phenomenon. End up with a graph of your dependent... Your graph's maths. We want science, dickhead. You don't know the difference between maths and science. You're an idiot. Oh, look. My independent variable changed, and so did my dependent variable. There's a... You don't know the difference between maths and science, <laughs> Rumpus. Say, right, I'm prepared to say this is the cause of that, but of course it's only provisional because you've got to make sure other people can reproduce the experiment, but you're denying you even measure the dependent variable. I mean, it's just incredible how... You measure the effect on the dependent variable if you correctly identify the cause of it. So you will cause an effect if you validate your independent variable as the cause of the effect. Then you will measure a reaction, a change, the effect occurring. Yeah, but the effect occurring is qualitative, i.e. you see the effect happen rather than not seeing it happen. That's a qualitative change. How much of it is absolutely and exclusively dependent on whether or not it actually happens first? Independent variable, and then you measure your dependent variable, Why and then you say, "Oh, look, this on my graph, I mean, he they just, look the same." He just repeated the same thing the like six times. So there we go. Well, That's just I don't think he's got through to him. I don't think he's got through. I think he's turned my microphone off, so he hasn't heard it. You see, he's, he hasn't. Heard this it. is a hundred and five years out of date pseudoscience, you numpty dipshit. Oh, it's the more. Oh God, the top morons come in. He it's a hundred and five years out of date, you numpty dipshit. Who also doesn't understand? We're, the we're looking for Einsteinian gravity, you numpty dipshit. 
<laughs> Again, it's all you can say. Exactly. You have no argument, have you? You yeah, numpty dipshit. Did you get us the moon's gravity pulling on the tides using Einstein's field equations yet? He doesn't believe in measuring Penrose. How stupid is that? I mean, he's denying all experiments that have what ever been conducted. What the hell? What are you on, sir? It's 105 years out of date pseudoscience, Cavendish non-experiment. Duh. Oh my God! They're conducting it now. They've they've improved it, and then there was a laboratory. I can't <laughs> remember it's somewhere. It is fucking dumbass. Hey, do you measure elevation from the center of the Earth or the center of the ellipsoid? Or so is it the I'm geoid? Ignorant today? of what's going on. They've got <laughs> advanced. Oh, that's they're an they're important detail. Now. Sorry, so I'm sorry, Rumpus. I'm really sorry to do this. Rumpus, Rumpus, I'm really sorry. Rumpus, Rumpus. If I can get your attention, if you can stop talking through everything constantly, Rumpus, please, Rumpus, Rumpus. If you can stop talking constantly, if there's any attempt whatsoever to have a communicative conversation with you, Rumpus, any chance you can shut up for ten seconds? Any chance? at all, Rumpus. Any chance you can just listen to something for 10 seconds? Any chance for 10 seconds? Any chance you can listen for 10 seconds, Rumpus? Rumpus! 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 There's a new question on the table. So he's never going to listen. He's just decided that it's just going to be him constantly talking. There is no conversation with Rumpus anymore. He's completely... Can I say something, Nathan? Can I get 20 seconds? Well, no. When I, I wanted Rumpus, no, no, no. I wanted him to actually address the question that QE had just asked, but it got rumpus. Do you want to ask again, QE? Is elevation the same I'm as the distance to the centre of the I'm Earth? I'm sorry. Rumpus? Go ahead. Is elevation the same as distance to the centre of the Earth, rumpus? Well, it depends what you're using. If you're using a, a GPS, the elevation they give you is relative to the WGS84 quant uh, datum. Now, but in principle, what that is doing is measuring the distance to the centre of the Earth and then subtracting the, the, the geoid. In principle, <laughs> no, that's the distance to the centre of the Earth. Chocolate. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> chocolate. Answer, can I just finish my answer? But the elevation given in GPS or relative to mean sea level is relative to mean sea level or the, or the WGS84. But as a simple understanding of the concept, I describe it sometimes as being relative to the centre of the Earth to help people like you understand what's going on. Because it's too relative difficult for to you to understand the what the WGS84 geoid is. I've spoken to you about this before and you didn't understand what the hell I was talking the about. Geoid. So for people like you, it's easier to explain <laughs> people to you like the me. distance from the centre of the Earth. You said you measure elevation from the distance from the centre of the Earth. And then you said you measure distance from the centre of the geoid. Which one is it? Not from the centre of the geoid. The, uh, you see, God, you didn't even, even hear me properly. It's not from the centre of the geoid. <laughs> listen, listen. Elevation from GPS is relative to the geoid surface. And that is not, which is approximately, but not exactly the same as mean sea level. But the principle, the principle, the principle is it's actually from the, the distance. Of the but we don't the want to give... But we don't want to give the distances in 6,000 kilometers, do we? We want to give it in just a few meters. So people are giving it in the GPS. Well, it's a geoid. Uh, WGS-84 elevation, which is very close to being mean sea level. The WGS-84 is an ellipsoid, per soundly. Yes, it's an ellipsoid. The geoid yes. and ellipsoid are not the same, son. Correct. I know, I know I'm correct. Well, you did, well, you were wrong about measuring the distance to the centre of the geoid. It's not. It's not that it's, the W eighty four is a is a is a ellipsoid, and when that the GPS gives yeah, you the it's distance not a relative geoid. to that. It's it's not sorry, did you just say? <laughs> did you just say ellipsoid? They, I'm sure you, I'm pretty certain you mean ellipsoid, do you not, Rumpus? <laughs> You're absolutely right. Ellipsoid. Yeah, correct. Okay. So you dumb shit, you can't even speak English correctly. So why are you talking on this subject when you can't even say the words correctly, you dumb idiot? Go back and learn English. Well, you got every, you got everything wrong. Next you are as thick as soundly. Excuse me, guys. I'd like to berate Rumpus for his abject stupidity. You are as thick as soundly. Don't understand. You don't understand how to say ellipsoid. Is a distance from the. Sorry, ellipsoid. Did you say? I said ellipsoid. You said ellipsoid. Like somebody who doesn't understand English. No, I did before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah you agree. did before because you don't understand English. Now you're going to be berated by a flat earther for your lack of comprehension when it comes to the English language. Like soundly, the abject moron. It is not elliptoid, as stated by both you and soundly, you complete thicko. It's ellipsoid. 
Now, can you apologise for my audience for poisoning them with your poor English? Do you, do you know what the double English for is, Nathan? You stutter for me or apologise for your incorrect pronunci- pronunci- pronunciation. Yeah? You don't have to say words, you thicko. Apologise for being an abject, calling human being, Nathan, to everybody. You need to- Yeah, excuse me, thicko. You don't even know how to pronounce the word of the model you're referencing and you're going to call me stupid. It's an ellipsoid, you stupid idiot. Spreading it around. Running around calling it an elliptoid is going to make your side realise just how stupid you are. Just as stupid as soundly. You can't even pronounce the model you're reifying. It's an ellipsoid model, Rumpus. You don't want to cope with You don't want to deal with the actual argument. So you're focusing on this as a deflection from the fact you're wrong about everything else. Oh, really? So gas go down, go boom, boom, like bouncy balls in a fish tank? We can, well, we can all see what you're doing here. You want to what? Distracting from my point that gas does not go down, go boom, boom. That's a violation of natural law. You to be an idiot. And you think- oh, now it's an ad hominem attack. I wonder why he's doing this. Well, it's because he's thick. He doesn't even know how to pronounce his own model. He called it an elliptoid. Isn't it? It's the only thing you've got in this argument now. I've exposed you as an No, idiot. definitely not. I've got the entropy law on my side. If the sky was a vacuum, the gas we breathe would fill the space. It's called entropy. I think the only thing I've got is your abject stupidity when it comes to pronunciation. Is that what it is? Pronunciation, my friend. When it comes to you saying words, you thicko. You don't understand experiments. You don't understand... Depend- you don't know how to pronounce ellipsoid. Or natural law. <laughs> yeah, natural law. Entropy law. You understand that entropy law would dictate that if the sky was a vacuum, the gas would fill the space. Want to dodge the argument? I'm- well, you seem to be talking through my argument. My argument is as follows. The sky is not a vacuum called outer space. If it was, the gas we breathe would fill it. By way of natural law called entropy. It's the only thing you've got, Nathan, in this entire... What, my entropy argument? Yeah, it's the only thing I've got and you've got no rebuttal. Let's see if you've got a rebuttal to entropy. So little bit of ammunition now in this debate because I've completely killed you in the rest of the debate we've had here. I've demonstrated you don't know what you're talking about. I'm just describing entropy and you don't seem to have a rebuttal to it. Nonstant verbal, di- constant verbal diarrhea isn't going to win you an argument, is it? Instead of a tea, and I'm more than happy you do that. Please, Karen, just talk about teas while I'll talk about the main subject and demonstrate to everyone else I, I have an understanding of science. Can I please science have 20 denier. seconds? I'm more than happy you to go on about ease, S and T's. Go ahead, Brian. And I, thank you. Rumpus, earlier, when I was asking him about the positive proven hypothesis for gravity, before I got even a chance to say from Albert Einstein, he said the Cavendish experiment. Now, that's not an experiment, number one. Number two, Henry Cavendish wasn't trying to prove gravity. He used it, he pre-assumed it as part of his apparatus. He was trying to determine the density of the Earth, nothing to do with gravity. How he was and measuring the value, he was a bit to measure the value of G. No. Sorry, say that again. Say that again, uh, Rumpus. He was, in effect, although he didn't write it down, he was, in effect, measuring the value of big G. Therefore, he was no, measuring he the measure force big of gravity. G. No, he didn't. No, he no, did. totally right. See, the boys did, did you numpty effect. dipshit. No, that's, 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 Although he's not listening. Man, it's 105 years out of date pseudoscience. No. In effect, sorry. measure uh, Sorry, did you not know that? Rumpus, you're being corrected. Oh, he's not He's not going to be prepared to listen. Somebody's correcting him again on being wrong. It's like a liptoid and a lipsoid all over again. He won't be corrected. He won't be corrected. You, did you not know it was CV boys? Did you not know that, Rumpus? And he did it by measuring indirectly the value of big G. He had to do that the value of the density of the Earth. Rumpus claimed big G. Now, I'm yeah, put him straight I didn't it. hear him wrong. Cavendish didn't calculate Big G. Yeah, I know, he but you, you directly, said CB boys. Uh, he he CB boys calculated it. In no, the he, process of calculating the density, oh, he indirectly... Yeah, this conversation's going to run into me, a header. If I'm left speak to Rumpus, it'll be sorted very fast. Rumpus, what is the calculated rate of the universal gravitational constant, which is Big G? You want me to give you the value? What is the calculated Sorry, is rate? You right, yeah, can you keep on fading G. out, Brian? Can you say that again? The universal gravitational constant. Right, What's the cal- calculated rate? What he's doing is he's talking through you intentionally so he can't hear you. Just a shitty old trick. Same trick as he's used the entire show, shockingly. You're trying to hear him. What, trying to hear him by asking him, by saying you're trying to hear him constantly? That's not going to work. Are you thick? Saying I'm trying to hear you, I'm trying to hear you, I'm trying to hear you will preclude you from hearing him, you thick shit. I did. 
I know it's polite. I know it's alien to you. Give me a second to, you, to say it, Rumpus, and, I, and then you can answer. How about that? Just said, be quiet for a second. So I can hear him exactly. You can't. He's uh, gonna hear you say that first before right. he can shut up. Oh, Thanks, Rumpus. Rumpus, let me let me ask you, and then you can answer. Okay. So I'm gonna go. I didn't hear Rumpus. that either. What is the calculated? What, leave me speak. What is the calculated rate of the universal gravitational constant, also known as Big G? Right. You want the value of Big G? Is that correct? The calculated rate. There is a calculated rate for little G, which rate. is nine point eight meters per second squared. It's what is the calculated rate. rate of Big G? It's not a rate. Have you what got is me the calculated down, rate of Big G? Yes, either. there is a calculated rate. Right. So Brian. Brian, you, it's not what a is, rate. Uh, Why are you talking about it as being a there rate? There is a calculated you, rate. You're getting confused with little g. Hold on. You're talking about little g. Are I'm you talking, talking about big, about big g, g or little not g? Not 9.8 meters per second square. That's little g. I can't hear you. You, you. you keep on garbling at the start of your sentence. If you shut are you up, talking about you would hear g? me. I've asked you about eight times now. What is the calculated rate for the universal gravitational constant? It's not a rate. O also known it's as Big not G. A rate, yes, yes, there is. Right, that's not a you rate. You don't know where Big G I'll comes from. It comes from, from Henry Henry Cavendish. It's not a rate. It's not a yes, I'll there you is. Okay, Do you want it. me to tell you what it is? Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Oh, yeah. Okay, Nathan. Six hundred and seventy-one million miles an hour. The same as the speed right, of light, right, as right, per right. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. Right. That's where right. Big G Here comes from. Nothing to do with Henry Cavendish. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're an unbelievable idiot who thinks that GPS uses the WGS84. You don't know what the Cavendish observation was about. You don't know what he was trying to do. You have to make a mistake after mistake. You're unbelievably, unbelievably thick, Rumpus, today. The answer, the value of Big G is not a rate it's not a velocity yes so you can't it say is the same. yes it is universal gravitational constant is the same as the speed of light 671 million miles an hour listen, listen listen the value of big g is not a velocity therefore it's not a speed therefore it's yes, got nothing it to do with is. yes it is it has nothing to do with henry cavendish Listen, okay. the value of Was Big Henry G, Cavendish the trying to prove listen, gravity? Listen, Was Henry Cavendish trying to prove gravity? Was that the point of his, listen, of his apparatus? Listen, listen, I'm giving you the value you asked for. The value of Big G is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 11 cubic meters per kilogram per second squared. That is the value. It's not a velocity. It's nothing to do that with the speed of light. No, no, Big G. That's not. Is that the universal gravitational constant, which you have to just stay in there? Yes, calculated just, rate. Okay, I, no, it's not rumpus. It's it not. You. The universal gravitational constant is the same as the speed of light, as per Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. The current pseudoscience uh, of gravity. What are talking about? You Can moron. I get that that is the, the current wrong, rumpus. Hold on, hold on, Brian. Hold on, rumpus. Hold on. Hold on. It's just clarity I need. Sorry, rumpus. I just need to bring clarity. Rumpus, please. Please. Rumpus, I'm trying to gain clarity. So are we talking about the 105-year out-of-date gravity of Reverend John Michelle Cavendish and C.V. Boys, or are we talking about the current pseudoscience of bending space-time? Gravitational constant, which is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 11 cubic metres per kilogram per second squared, and the speed of light. They're not the same thing. One's one constant, there's another constant, like saying... I don't know, the, the Rumpus, constant of a Rumpus, wave of kilograms Rumpus. is the same as a second. You've the universal con gravitational constant is the same as the speed of light as per Albert Einstein himself and his theory of general relativity. Can 671 I, 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 million how? miles an hour. You don't know what you're talking you about. Utter, you, don't utter. Even know, you don't even know that, the, that Henry Cavendish wasn't trying to prove gravity. He pre-assumed it as part of his apparatus. Can I have a citation of, of either of you? Because this is all abracadabra to me. I don't know which one is true. He was measuring the value of Big G in effect, although he didn't print it in his bloody paper. He indirectly determined the value of Big G, and he had to he do that. He was determining the density of the Earth. He was determining the density of the Earth, not determining gravity at all. It was pre-assumed as part of his apparatus. Demonstrate what a moron you are. Let me get it straight. No, so, hold on, Brian. Hold on, either. Brian. Yeah. Hold on. So, according to Rumpus, he's just disclaimed that after the fact, it was shown to be correlated 
with this gravity that he's describing. But yet at the beginning of his entrance, he told us that it was scientific validity for gravity. So it's not actually even yeah. part of the paper then, Rumpus. Of course, gravity is part of the paper. He goes on about the force of gravity in it. He goes on about the force of gravity before he's actually validated it with the experiment. No, he's, he's establishing in the experiment, he's saying, we've got this phenomenon about gravity, your bathroom scales weight. And he's saying, right, OK, I believe it to be by Newton's laws caused by the masses. Yeah, so what I'm going to do... Is hold I'm on, Brian. Brian, hold on. Sorry. Stop, interrupting Stop interrupting me. And so he's then saying, right, we've got this phenomenon about things attracting things. One and Newton described, had, had this theory that um, what it was caused by. So he then decided to measure the force of attraction of masses using his experiment. And then in the process of doing that, he indirectly determined the value of big G, and then he used effectively, though he didn't quite, you know, didn't print out directly, then worked out the density of the Earth. But he had to go through working out what big G was, in effect, in his experiments. Okay, and do you understand... <laughs> hold on a second. The experiment, therefore, wasn't actually proving gravity then? Yes, it did. It proved as mass attracts mass. So the dependent variable isn't torsion bar twist; it's mass it is. attracting mass. It's, it's, okay, he's trying to okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Rumpus. Okay, uh, Rumpus. I'm trying to gain so clarity. Yeah, you're just being an intolerable prick immediately as soon as the conversation starts. It doesn't seem to matter how reasonable anybody is with you. Or between masses, and therefore he. Yeah, I don't need your verbal diary. I needed to ask a question. You don't like the fact. I know you don't like science, Nathan. I know you want to deny the science. He, he you're looking not for answering. Sources, you're it. just blabbering on. Yeah, just blabbering on. So he said he clearly... measured he measured gravity in his experiment. Well, so gravity was the dependent variable then. Between masses, gravity is the force of attraction between masses. Okay, thank you. Now I've got a further question, if you'll allow me. Where's this experienced in nature? When you get on some bathroom scales, you see the force. So if I put a helium balloon on bathroom scales, it'll do the same? In a vacuum, it will, yes. In a vacuum, the helium itself won't fill the availability of the balloon. It'll be downward bias. It'll fill, most, it? Yes, it will fill, it'll fill all the balloon. It'll, be... it'll fill all the balloon. So it's not biased downwards inside the balloon. It's equally filling the balloon, not downwardly biased then. That's why, that's why it goes... That's why the helium balloon falls in a vacuum. Sorry, the gas inside the balloon. I'm talking about inside the balloon, specifically the gas inside the balloon. Does it have a downward bias? Is the balloon fatter at the bottom because the gas has a downward bias? You can look down with us and I'll explain why. You can measure the... Sorry, so a balloon is fatter at the bottom because there's more gas downwardly biased. I, I was about to tell you how you can measure it and you interrupted me. You... Sorry, I haven't got any yes or a no from you. You just didn't listen to my question. Do you want me to repeat it 17 times? Okay, repeat, repeat the question. So inside the balloon is your assertion that the balloon is fatter at the bottom because there is a greater force downwards, therefore fatter balloon at the bottom, thinner at the top. There's more tension. You're talking about the balloon now. We're talking about the density of the helium in there. It's slightly more dense at the bottom of the balloon than the top. That doesn't it's not a yes or no answer. That's a lot of convoluted nonsense. So I'm asking a very simple question. Does the gas in the balloon expand equally in all directions, or is there more downward force inside the balloon? Let me ask about the fatness of the balloon. The balloon is the shape of the balloon is determined by the tension of the the skin of the balloon. So it'll depend on exactly on where how you've tied it, whether it's fat or not. What is affected is the density of the helium atoms in the balloon, and they will be very, very slightly more dense at the bottom of the balloon than at the top. So you're saying that the balloon is fatter because there's more pressure at the bottom of it? That's absurd. No, the, t the, the fat. No, so not more pressure at the bottom. Then not bias down. I'm not getting confused. I asked a simple question: Is there more pressure at the bottom of the balloon than at the top? And the answer is a simple no. You've already told us no. There are two factors that determine the fatness of your balloon. One is the thing inside it, what that gets up to. And two, it's the tension in the skin of the balloon. I see. So if we had a theoretically equally tensioned balloon in all directions, would it be fatter at the bottom? It's much better to talk about 
Uh, ignore my question. Much better to ignore my question. So with an equally tensioned balloon, theoretically a perfect equal balance of tension, the tensile strength was equal in all directions. Would it be fatter at the bottom? There are more helium... Seem to be talking through me. Correct me if I'm wrong, Discord server. He didn't listen to my absolute annihilation of his claim that gas go down, go boom, boom. At the bottom of the balloon, then there are... He's not listening to me anymore, is he? He's lost. He's lost. You've lost, Rumpus. You're not listening anymore. So, gas doesn't go down, go boom, boom. In an equally tensioned balloon with equal tensile strength in all directions, the gas will expand equally in all directions into the balloon. You don't have fat balloons at the bottom because there's more gas pressure at the bottom of them. There is no bias downwards. And there he goes again, interrupting me before the conclusion, because he's lost. There was a stone-cold silence before I did that. He had plenty of opportunity. There was a stone-cold silence. But while I'm talking, he knows he's lost, so he's going to interrupt every word of it. The balloon has gas inside it. Well, I get interrupted by Arwin. And the balloon would have equal pressure on all surfaces of it. That's what gas does. It expands in all directions. Helium than there are at the top. There are more helium atoms at the bottom of a cubic container than there are at the top because gravity's pulled them down. Well, then you'd have, <laughs> then you'd have greater pressure Show. at the bottom than the balloon would... <sighs> you live in fantasy land, Rumpus. Then the balloon would yeah, be fatter oh, yeah. at the bottom. Then the balloon would be greater in size at the bottom and thinner at the top. That's not what balloons do. They have equal pressure in all directions. There is more pressure at the bottom of a... That's a baseless generalisation assertion that you're not backing with anything. That's not what balloons do. Oh, it's a scientific fact. Scientific? <laughs> you don't know what science is. You think measuring things is science. That's maths. You're an idiot when it comes to science. You don't know what it is. No, it's not. You know, no, no. Measuring things is not maths, Nathan. You have to <laughs> measuring things is not maths, Nathan. Somebody put quotes around that. Rumpus, 2020. <laughs> measuring things is not maths, Nathan. You don't understand <laughs> not exactly what, what it exclusively is. Yes. Yeah. Rumpus has just declared to my audience, quote, measuring things is not maths, Nathan. Rumpus. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but hey nathan i wanted to address the helium balloon supposedly one part being fatter than the other because of whatever reason well i'll tell you a balloon uh, whatever helium is in there if it's filled with helium it will actually go with the bigger part to the top you know why because helium always in regular air wants to go up yet the balloon itself is rubber and the bottom part you know where it's uh, knotted closed and all that is slightly more dense than the rest of the balloon. So actually, the yeah, the less dense part of the helium goes down with the more rubbery part of the balloon. So it's actually quite <laughs> exercise. It's a physical exercise of you measuring something in the physical world, and then you turn it into a number. But because it turns into a number, you then think, oh, it's just math, because you're a moron. You don't understand that where that number came from, which is a physical property in the natural and physical world. So, so numbers are physical properties, physical then. Thing. It's not a pure <laughs> mathematical thing. You are a moron to think so that it's just a physical properties, just because really? it's got a number. You that, 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 numbers trying not to interrupt you. not listening. Verbal diarrhea time. He's lost badly, so it's verbal diarrhea time. Never let your opponent say anything from the point that you've lost, and then people will think you've won. You are a moron to think... Now, or ad hom them constantly, rather than listening to anything addressed. So you think numbers are physical? That's your question. Bring a physical property that has a quantitative value. A oh, quantitative? What does that mean? Maths. What you does quantitative mean? All science is... <laughs> no, 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 no. Quantitative, right? Yeah, describing it with numbers... That's not a physical property. What are you talking about? Let's have a number. Does that make it pure math? No, it doesn't. It's no worries. Bring me a bag of nines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the gift that just keeps on giving. You, you confused about so much. It's just I'm nice. not confused. It's a request. Bring me a bag of nines. Physics. You're a moron. I mean, bring me a bag of nines then. Do you understand the dependent variables? Do you understand what a bag of nines looks like? I've never seen one. Has anybody ever seen a bag of nines? Dependent variable. 
has got a yes, value. Yes, in Do Germany. You understand that it's got a number? Does that make it just pure math? It represents a physical property. It represents. So it's abstract then. It's not physical then. It's representative of something else. So abstract then. It represents a... F and that's abstract then. Stuff like that. So not physical then. That's abstract. Maybe talk constantly, you coward. You measure a dependent variable. So that would be abstract then. Representative of, but not physically actually. So that's abstract, Rumpus. Maybe ignore me. You're measuring a phenomenon. You're giving it a number because science is all about measuring numbers and working out the relationship between. That's them. math. God, you're that's a math. Be dipshit. You idiot. Is about measuring numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you measure a number? Yeah. Dude, hey, numbers, remember, numbers, numbers are not math. They're, they're just numbers. science, and do science you understand is not the number, a number. Nathan. Do Hold you on. understand what that the science is about is measuring numbers? How do you measure a number? It's a number. Sorry, I just got to tell. It's a number. Okay. <laughs> you have I just to need to... In math, but it originated from a physical quantity. But it's a number. We have to represent a physical quantity with a number. It's a okay, variable. Thank it's a you, variable. Rumpus. Variable thank means you. it's a variable it's a number. Thank you. Maybe say it 16 times. I just want to tell you something, Rumpus. A very but wise, a a very wise man once told just, me... Just, me, and then I'll just say it once. Go on then, say what you like. Right, I'll just okay. Well, a dependent <laughs> variable is a number, but it represents a physical quantity. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? So your independent variable is now a number. This is yes, yes. You have to measure it. So, for instance, if you apply a force on something, that's your independent variable. That's got a number associated with it. Yes. If you want to draw on a graph, which you do, you end up with two graphs of your dependent variable. Draw on a graph. Variable. How do you that's manipulate a number? They represent, they represent think... physical quantities. I mean, do you not understand this? I mean, you have to be really, well, really, Rumpus, really. How do you manipulate a number in the physical world? I think you're mixing up a mathematical formula I'm just, I'm just, with a scientific no, hypothesis. No. That's correct, Darwin. He doesn't know the difference between maths and science. That's right property and then you have to apply a number you have to say what is this physical property that i'm looking at and you have to assign it a number wow. using some unit scale so you have what? to measure things with numbers hold on what was the I mean, question that betty asked you hold on uh, hold on a second guys what was the question that betty asked geo streber <laughs> i was gonna say that too what's the equation for germ theory yes if math well, then, is science well, there what's is the equation What's the equation You're for germ up. theory? You've been asked what the equation for germ theory is. Well, uh, well, anybody. Well, it depends what part of germ theory. If you're talking about the spread, for instance, how germs spread, no, there germ will be a theory. relationship of how. No, well, germ theory. Science, What's the equation science, of germ science, theory? I know you don't. You, you can't. Oh, pardon me. You uh, don't understand anything about math, so you dodge the issue. But almost all science, particularly physics and chemistry, is all about maths. You rep Sorry, we're going to ask you 17 <laughs> times in a row until you accept that you don't have an answer. I'm going to ask you, and then you're going to interrupt, and then QE's going to ask you, and we're going to do it non-stop. What's the equation for germ theory, the rumpus? Yeah, well, okay, if, if in germ theory you have a dependent and an independent variable, those will... Yeah, we know. Out. It's science. Yeah, we knew that. Now we want the equation for it. Go. Well, if there is some element of it that has an equation value, has a dependent, dependent, independent variable, then you will element. have an equation for it. The germ theory equation, so basically please. You're saying, right, you're saying that germ theory doesn't have any independent, dependent variables. Well done. That's what you've just described the problem. Sorry, we'd like the equation for germ theory, please, Rumpus, because everything is numbers according to you. So I'd like the equation for germ theory. Go. If there is an independent, an independent variable in germ theory, then... No, we're not asking for an independent variable. We're asking you for the always present and evervescent mathematics that must be associated with this according to you. So I'll ask for, I believe it's the fifth time. Then QE will ask you, then I'll ask you. What is the equation for germ theory? And so does it have any variables? We're not asking for the variables. <laughs> we're asking for the equation that you said must be there. Do you not have one? It doesn't have any variables. So basically, it's a... No, we're not asking for variables. You definitely have those. It's science. It had an independent variable and a dependent variable that were validated by experiment. It definitely has those. But you assert that it must have mathematics. Now we're asking for the equation for germ theory. Almost all science is quantitative and has variables, yes. Oh, excellent. Give us the <laughs> germ theory mathematics then, please. Yeah, but that's... 
I mean, just to say something exists, I mean, you can argue is a bit of science, but it's not very deep. No, no, we'd like the equation for germ theory, please. Do you not have one? You must have one, according to you. Are you just wrong? You have to quantify it. Go on, then. Quantify it with an equation. Give us the equation for germ theory. Go. It doesn't, you, right, so do you accept, you claim the scientific method always has to have an independent, independent variable. If, no, we asked for the equation for germ that? theory. Hold on, hold on. Are you saying that all science has to have, be based on the scientific method? If so, No, we're asking you, the one who said it always involved maths, for the equation for germ theory. Don't you understand English? Elliptoid? Science doesn't have to have <laughs> an, independent, an independent variable. He just- Sorry, we're asking you for the equation you said would always be present for germ theory. Do you have an equation for germ theory, Mr. Maths must be always present? Contradicting himself. He just... No, I'm asking for the equation for germ theory. It seems you don't have one. Yeah, he said repeatedly that science is about the scientific method. So he... That's right. And you said it was about maths. And now we're asking for an equation for germ theory, something that's been scientifically validated. Do you have one? You heard it here today. Yeah, we asked you for the equation for germ theory, given that you say maths must be always present. And you don't seem to have one. Do you have an equation for germ theory? Here we go. So there, you deny, you've contradicted yourself. You've just. Uh, no, I asked for an <laughs> equation for germ theory. I haven't contradicted myself. I'll repeat it. It's probably about the 10th time you've been asked. You claimed maths is always. We're saying, give us maths for germ theory. What's the equation? You haven't got it. Bear that in mind, people. So if he ever says that oh, science always has to have a scientific method, an independent variable, you can tell him, oh, Nathan, what did you say on the 22nd of the 12th, 2020? You- I said, what's the equation for germ theory, Rumpus? So there we go. So you. So there we go. We didn't get one. So math's not always there in science then. No, 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 Nathan, Nathan, do you believe then that all science... Maybe distract onto a new question. We're waiting for the equation for germ theory. Can you ask him again, please, Kiwi? He doesn't seem to be answering. Yes, we need we germ theory is science. Depend- You're I'm saying math is science, so give us the equation of germ theory. You're dodging, Nathan. You no, you're dodging and projecting. It would seem we're asking for the equation for germ theory. It seems you're dodging. And I, and I bet you there are some you're, theories you're involved in germ theory, and they do involve it's very variables. apparent. But you're saying, oh, it you're doesn't like need Muhammad to have Ali one, right now on the ropes. You accept presumably that it is part of science. So you've just contradicted yourself, and I've just exposed you, and I'm very happy about that. That's excellent. You're happy about the exposure of you not giving us the equation for germ theory? I'm very happy that I've just exposed you as not contradicting yourself. As a stuttering, (laughs) stammering, not giving us the equation for germ theory moron that said maths is always present, and yet germ theory doesn't seem to have an equation or you'd given us it. Already. B, experiments in germ theory, which do have dependent and independent variables. Yeah, we know. We know what science is. (laughs) Yeah, we know that. Yeah, we're well aware that germ theory, which is based on scientific experimentation, has independent and dependent variables. We're well aware of that. But your claim is that everything must have maths. So we're asking for the equation for germ theory. Do you have that? Observations, science. You see, germ theory is an observation. And you have many observations like, I don't know, uh, think of a non-numeric observation, whether, whether a stars exist or something, um, or how many Earths there are, you could argue as a scientific observation. It doesn't. That's fascinating. Do you have the equation for germ theory? But observations are part of science, which I'm very... That's fascinating. And do you have the equation for germ theory as it's absolutely required, according to you? You just accept it that observations are part of science. And it is an ob- no, you seem to be avoiding our question and talking about observational sciences, which aren't experiments. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the maths you said must be present for germ theory. Do you have the equation for germ theory, Rumpus? I'll go find out exactly what germ theory is. I wouldn't want to just guess what exactly it is. Well, it must have maths. Give us the equation for it. There's bound to be some part of it which is... I mean, the thing is, <laughs> things are allocated names like theory of laws in some ancient way. For instance, the germ theory... Apparently, what is it? You know, we're talking about something really before the period of science, really. Um, it's no, it's got an independent and dependent variable, as you just confirmed. It's definitely validated by science. It's definitely had an experiment, and there was definitely a theory formed at the end of it. And we'd like the equation for that, please. Do you have it? No, does it have a dependent? Does it have a dependent and independent variable? Given- yes, it definitely has independent and dependent variables validated by an experiment to form a scientific theory. That would be germ theory. Now we'd like you to give us the equation for it. Hold on. on. 
developed a little bit more. So the germ theory does have dependent and independent variables. That- yes, it's a theory. It's based on valid science, and it must have those things. We already know that. You said it must have maths, and we're asking you for the equation, however. I misunderstood you then, right? So- Nia, you misunderstood what you were declaring incorrectly, which is that it must have maths. And yet you don't seem to be giving us the equation for germ theory. You seem to be obfuscating and sliming around that fact that you were wrong about. So no maths for this germ theory then, Clown Show. So you're saying that the germ theory has dependent and independent variables. Yeah, it's science. You keep repeating that. Yeah, your little tactic of repeating what science is when we already know doesn't give you an equation for germ theory when your claim is that it's always maths. And yet you don't seem to have an equation for germ theory. And you don't seem to be addressing it. You seem to be dodging it. You seem to have been absolutely annihilated in your claim that maths is science. And admirably demonstrably, you don't know what science is. It's not maths. If it was, you'd have some equation for germ theory. But you don't, Rumpus. You don't know the difference between maths and science. Independent. Dependent variables in germ theory, which you're used Yeah, we know. You keep babbling on about independent and dependent variables in this germ theory based on science, which you said must have maths. So we asked you for the equation for it, and you're not giving it us. What are the independent... Why ask me something when we've asked you for the equation for germ theory? That seems like a very obfuscational tactic. And I'm asking you... I know you're asking me, but you haven't given us the answer to the mathematics you said was required for germ theory. Can I have the equation for it, please? variables are that you believe them to be you tell me what the variables are and i'll give you and no no we're not questioning whether or not it's got variables we're questioning whether or not it must have maths like you claimed you see there we go i met you don't want to tell me what the independent and dependent variables in germ theory are X. no we want to know what the equation for it is because that was your claim maybe we can have the equation for germ theory as you claimed it must have maths you said that you knew what the well you didn't quite say and you said you had an equation for it Right, so let's swap the, yeah, so we'll swap them. So you tell you me. You could just concede you were wrong about this. Yes. Okay, you know? That's a, that sounds like a fair deal to me. Yeah, we'll concede then. So there's no mathematics for germ theory. Come on, come on, Nathan. Tell me what the dependent and independent variable are, because that means. No, no. <laughs> tell us that you concede that you don't have an equation for it. No, I, I, I will I'll present it to you when you tell me what the dependent and independent variable is. I'd need the equation to give it you. Uh, Can you give it me? He's no, holding it no, back no, no, on us, guys. Uh, 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 I'd need the equation. That's I'd need the right equation. Way. It must have maths, right, Rumpus? You determine the equation. I know he's not listening anymore. Coward. It must have maths, though, right? So I'm pretty sure that to have a dependent and independent variable, I've got to have some maths. So I'd like the equation first, like we've been asking for the last half an hour. Can you give me that? Ed. You said germ theory has a dependent and independent variable. Please. Yes, that's correct. But we're also holding you to task on your claim that it must have maths by asking you to give us the, the uh, equation there, Rumpus. Maybe you could give us that. Uh, uh, not these two variables, there, Nathan. You said you knew them. Well, you didn't quite say that. I must probably be being a bit unfair. You said, uh, you said there's always maths, though. So let's not worry about what you misunderstood about what I said, elliptoid. Mr. Can't speak English. Mr. It must always have maths. Either you can give us an equation for this scientific validity, or you can't. Oh, is he? Ju- he's run away. Popped himself on mute and legged it. Did he? Yep. What a numpty. Yeah. Just so yeah. we could sew this up, I was trying to get him to read the three citations in Discord. From Richard Feynman, mathematics is not a science from our point of view in the sense that it is not a natural science. The test of its validity is not experiment. From Dr. Kerry Mullis, Nobel no, Art, Biochemistry, Mathematics, which is really not science. And then finally, Professor Black Rishnan, Professor of Physics, ITT Madras. That's the whole point about physics. It's not mathematics. You are a numpty dipshit demonstrated thousands of times. You're finished. Bye-bye, lardass. With that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video.